so they can throw everything at it. And then we go to our final match, and there will be a breather because Shauna Lee's playing in three finals, and she will have a 40-minute break, uh, and, and fair enough, she's got a busy day. We'll have that break, and we're going to bring you some highlights from the Learn Coach League, but that mixed doubles final is one that you want to stick around for. It's going to be worth the wait, isn't it? Yeah, and it's all four players are in form, so uh, it, it really will be a test. We've got an international pairing of uh, Oliver Leighton Davis and Nona Pack, and they're up against the two in-form youngsters coming through, so really exciting. It's going to be a wonderful day, really looking forward to it, to finals day here at uh, the New Zealand Nationals for 2020. Well, let's get into it. Let's welcome our first match. It's the men's singles, and boy, this is a budding rivalry, a building rivalry between Lau and Minota. Yeah, and so uh, here come Edward Lau and Abanab Minota. So the rivalry continues, which uh, started a number of years ago, and escalates now into the uh, final of the New Zealand Championships for, for 2020. Uh, Edward's, Edward's path through has, has been quite quite steady. He's, um, he's played really well up until this point where Minota had a real tough semi-final yesterday. Um, and I, it was really interesting. They, they trained together day in, day out, and I was watching them even before they started, and they were warming up together, even though they're playing a final. And uh, the comradeship is, is really, really strong within the badminton fraternity, and I guess that all goes out the window now for the next 30 or 40 minutes and uh, the game faces go on and it's all match time. Holly Cho is our umpire for this one. Yeah. So we saw end. You receive. Choose your end. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so Holly Cho and uh, Vic Kim. Well, uh, Adjudicate this one. There is uh, the pathway through to the final. It's been pretty comfortable from the quarterfinals onwards for Lau with a straight game uh, victories over Jack Jiang. And uh, prior to that, uh, Clive Luna. And uh, for Minota, though, uh, he's had uh, quite the battle on his hands just to make it to uh, the stage relatively comfortable in that uh, quarterfinal, but look at that semi-final. 27-25 in the first game, then dropped the second, won the third comfortably, but uh, that was quite the battle, wasn't it, for Minota just to be here? Yeah, he had to, he had to work hard, and, and I guess coming out of the um, Lernco League that they've just played, which was all up to 11, all of a sudden you're back to a, a standard 21, and everything changed. Your whole tactics and bits and pieces become a, a different kettle of fish, and that stamina and bits and pieces plays a more and more important yeah, and, and fascinating talking to uh, Edward prior to this uh, final about that. He, he highlighted that, that uh, it's very different, very uh, challenging in different ways. Uh, and there is head-to-head, uh, -head, the matchup. Uh, they have played twice before in this final, 2017 and 2019. On both occasions, Minota was the victor. Edward Lau has yet to win a New Zealand senior title. He's 19. Minota much more experienced at 28, but look at the rankings. One for Lau, two for Minota, and head-to-head, uh, -head, again, Minota has that advantage. Five wins to two, and two of those, as I say, in this very match, 2017 and 19. So I, I don't think there's any question at the moment, and uh, fans of Oscar Guo might uh, beg to differ, uh, and it's great that uh, there's this conversation even being had I don't think there's any debate that these are the two best uh, men's singles players in the country right now. Oh, I think right now, without, without a doubt, and I think the um, the previous seven weeks have, have proved that, where, where these two were really the, the two that came out from uh, the bunch as such. And you know, it's, it's really fantastic. They've had that build-up to, to lead into what is um, the most important, I guess, men's singles match of the year for, for these two. National championships that uh, was deferred from June in a post-COVID sporting landscape that has changed remarkably and of course we're just off the back of uh, a wonderful and very successful seven weeks of the learn coach new zealand badminton league which has got these players uh, that you'll see today on the program throughout the day today in great shape and great form as uh, today we are hosted by the harcourts cooper and co north harbour badminton center and uh, this should be a lot of fun Minota against Lau. The youngster against the uh, more experienced uh, contender, but uh, it is the youngster that uh, perhaps 
carries favoritism. It, and, and if he does, it, it's around 55-45 in a percentage uh, sense on the back of Ladies some very good performances in the Loon Coach Oman League. Right. Aminabu Manota, North Harbour. On my left, Edward Lau, North Harbour. Aminabu Manota to serve. Lobo, play. Course, uh, we're back to the traditional scoring format as well after seven weeks of rapid fire first to 11 this is uh, best of three games to 21 games sets maybe your preferences both both play quite a similar game they're both very, very consistent, very, very steady. So it'll be interesting to see how they tactically break each other down and to, to gain that dominance. of the game will be interesting as I say just making those adjustments after the shorter scoring format to win a senior title but has uh, a number of uh, junior and age group titles uh, to his name of course third time of asking though in the men's singles final by contrast of course a three-time defending champion three, so he's owned this four. for the last three years yeah, that, that last year's match was was two points separated them steady as she goes at the moment so neither player able to stamp their authority early Stop on this one but, uh, that might be the expectation I think we're here for the long haul from both players uh, in the front court is uh, superb. They really have found their range on that occasion. Now just misjudging in the back court. Yeah, be feeling there might be a few kilometers covered covered in this match. Decision was a little easier for Lau. Subs over five, four.
superb angle again. There's uh, real pressure at net from both players on that occasion. Minota forcing the mistake from Lau. You know, I don't think you want to be giving giving away too many easy ones because it's uh, they're going to be hard enough to get. And yeah, that was a real opportunity there. There was plenty of open court for Lau to smash into, but pushed it wide. Sub silver seven. Played. Just that deception started to send Lau Stop towards the uh, the backcourt, and then just lovely touch over the net. Both players appearing twice on the program today. Nani will uh, back up in the men's doubles, and uh, Edward will play in the final match of the day, the mixed alongside Shauna Lee. So this is a little bit of a turnaround here for Minota. He was 6-4 uh, down. Seven. He's had a really good sequence here now to uh, just assert some control. Almost at the midway point of this first game. Eleven, seven, that will see them uh, go to the change with a four point advantage, and uh, it's really come out of nowhere. It looked very tight, very even, and all of a sudden, Minota's just quietly eased away here. Yeah, and, and these notorious for doing that you've got to be on your game the whole time you're playing him otherwise you, you you button off for a little few seconds and suddenly there's two or three points have, have come through and he, he just has that buffer built back in so uh, Edward Lau's challenge now is to is to eliminate that uh, that deficit and get back on on even terms and again for, for those joining us today on, on the back of uh, perhaps your interest being peaked in the, the Learn Coach New Zealand League there are some differences in the traditional scoring format there's no timeouts we do though have that opportunity for just a little breather and a drink at 11 points in the race to 21 but uh, for the players they have to uh, be a little more in control of their own destiny and tactics Just long. Well, for a Stop moment there, Lau's body Eight. language suggested Eleven. he'd made the wrong call, but just called long. And that, that little break at 11 is helping Lau. Minota would have been quite happy just to carry on, but uh, it's been as good as a timeout, if you like, for Edward Lau. He's just regathered here, still two points adrift, though. Well, the apology, but really no reason to. Play the drop shot and you get the roll off the net, uh, Glenn. Good luck to you. Yeah, it was just uh, very well executed. Very tight. I missed on that occasion. Subs over 10, 12. 
important moments here in this final for Edward Lau. Just uh, looking to limit the damage at the moment. Just two points down, so right in this game, but it's right on the balance. Control from both players. Dubs over. Thirteen. Ten. So both players will have had a pretty heavy workload in getting themselves to uh, finals Sunday. As mentioned, they're both playing in two finals today. Minota's just starting to take control of this one now. Ten. Too much there. Stops over. 11 14. Played loud. Moving Minota around the court until the opportunity opened up for the winner. Both players are very much limiting their unforced errors here. Possibly the easiest shot of the rally, Minota. Yeah, I think he knows it too. 13, 14. Lau fighting his way back into this. Minota, but uh, that looked clean, Len. I yeah, that was that was just great touch. And Lau wasn't that far away from that, but still couldn't really do much about it. And, and they're so tough to to uh, combat, aren't they? When you take the shuttle right at the top of its arc, there. Last time they played, they'd be halfway through the second set by now. Yeah. Yeah, well, it was interesting Edward highlighted that, didn't he, that the return to Stop traditional football. scoring, he said uh, you know, one 14. game or one set is the equivalent of a match from the Learn Coach yeah. League. And uh, that's not just a, a physical uh, change. Mentally, Mentally, you've got to change as well. Absolutely. Rally of the match so far. 
wonderful scrambling there from Minota just to stay alive in that one. Both players uh, searching for oxygen. Just gets him back to that little three-point buffer. Yeah, I, Laos, I, I, I've said a couple of times, he just keeps Seven hanging eight. tough, but equally, Minota then, when he gets back within range, he just extends out again. And uh, I reckon he can now see the finish line in this first uh, set, 17-14. First of five finals on offing today. Well played. We haven't seen power really take control of this at any time. It's been the touch of the players, the disguise, the subtlety. Both, both very much shot makers in, in the way they play. Well played. This time, Minota was the one steering Lau all Stop over that court. Players starting to test the patience now of Holly Cho. Taking their time, and on that occasion, Lau being told, don't brush your sweat onto the court surface. It's gone wide. Subs over. 16, 18. Well, I'll be very surprised if we can top that through the day today. It is so early on finals day, and that might be as good as it gets. That was quite brilliant. Quite brilliant. I actually think that had everything in it. You could piece together numerous points, and that came down to one point, had everything. Well, and incredibly, incredibly, when uh, Edward Lau just in... Abs it was a prayer, wasn't it, uh, on a Sunday morning? Just absolutely threw the racket out there in the hope that he might get something on it. He did, but Minota was quick enough to stay 19, in the point. 16. So both players now really looking to recover. They've had quite the little breather here. They now need to regather Lau to stay alive. Minota just to push towards 21. Oh, and that was a chance to go all but. Subs over, 17, 19. Of course, uh, being a national championship in any clash where it is uh, association on association, as in two players from the same, there will be no coach involvement. Minota pounces. The question about did he hit the net? The shuttle certainly hit the net. Or is, is what's Minota signalled here, Glenn? He said he hit, he's, he's, he's acknowledged he's at the net. Well, that is incredible and testament to the character and the personality of Mani Minota. They're both, both very, very humble men, and yeah, off the court, they're good mates, so I, I imagine that uh, there, there is a line. Well, 
Well, he gets That's a just shot. reward, if you like. Winning the point is superb, wasn't it? So just to confirm there that uh, the racket cannot, or the body, cannot come into contact with the net at all. So Minota on that previous point indicating that he did clip the net, but he now has two game points. Oh, just stunning badminton, really of the highest order from both players. And it is Minota who just nudges over the line, taking the first game 21-18. But uh, we saw a couple of rallies in the closing stages of that first game, just highlighting the quality of these two players and how evenly matched they are. Yeah. And as we said before, they, they play quite similar, and it's a matter of now of, of everything starting to come up a level, you know, the, the second half of that set. All the badminton really came up, the speed and everything else was, was lifted. And I imagine this next game will be exactly the same. And, and really it was just that uh, approaching the midway point of, of, of the game that Minota took control. He was down 6-4. And then we talked about it. it was suddenly, it's like he snuck up on you. Uh, certainly snuck up on Lau and, and led 11-7. And from that moment, Lau kept closing. But every time he did, Minota just went away again. It was just that break, wasn't it, to go to 11-7 that set up winning the game. And, he, and Lau just couldn't quite get there. He just couldn't quite get to the even Steven stage and, and, and get ahead. Minota just managed to keep that one, two, three points ahead. Um, and it's that little buffer that he's got at the end. Of course, uh, Arbanab Minota does have uh, the greater international experience, ranked at 113 in the world in singles. And uh, likewise, uh, ranked uh, highly in men's doubles uh, alongside uh, Oliver Layden Davis and they will pair up in the men's doubles final match three today on our schedule but uh, there's no question that uh, Edward Lau is uh, a player with a big international future already having represented New Zealand at uh, four junior world championships played at the Sudaman Cup uh, last year so he's uh, right now are going to be one of the first names discussed when the selectors get together for uh, for New Zealand team. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And, and both of these two are, are entrenched in that, in that team and that squad training at the moment. So, uh, as we mentioned before, they've, they've spent a lot of time on, on court training and playing so far, and this is a, another one at the highest level that they have to, have to perform at. Second game. Really have been impressed with the touch of both players. There's a lot of quality in that front court. Play. Oh, goodness me, the control there from Minota. He has reversed the direction of the shuttle with a flick of the wrist. moments here for Lau. We saw how tough Minota was to peg back in that first game. Yes, he certainly doesn't want to give him too much of a, to a leader here. on that occasion, just deserting Two. Minota. Oh. Nice, uh, he, got that, he got that slightly wrong, it just dropped below that net height, and he just, uh, he, was that split second too slow on that one? Nice mini comeback here from Lau to shut down that lead. So, so 
That is a rare moment. Three, Previous four. occasion, Minota was being aggressive on that occasion, though, just looking for the drop and underplayed it. Oh, just pouncing. That was always the risk for Minota. Playing that. Uh, with pace, uh, but leaving the open court if Lau was good enough, and he was. Four, and he'll be three. he'll be looking for any opportunity he can get to to get a, his nose in front here. It's a rare moment when Lau can just flex that uh, bicep and play with some power. He really had put the work in to create that opening though, and it's, it's going to take more and more of that. Problem with his eye. Mani Minota okay. calling for the referee, yeah, and I, that was the impression I got to Glenn, was that he had an issue with an eye can be a bit of an occupational hazard where a tiny piece of uh, feather can, can end up uh, lodged. So just uh, really sure in a situation like this, I mean, the referee's there to make sure that uh, all the rules are being followed, but there's not a lot that he can do to assist physically Manota here. This will be a concern not just for this uh, singles final, but uh, Manota, as we've mentioned, is playing in the men's doubles as well today. Just uh, allows him the time anyway to make a recovery of sorts. So allow ready to go. 5 3. Going through uh, a mini slump here, Monota. It's too low up in this game. Yeah, just, just that little eye issue and whether he can get back the focus uh, quickly to, to get back in it or whether Edward Rao can, can pounce on that as an opportunity to, to create that gap. Uh, and th at the moment, it's looking like the latter. Lau is looking to be merciless here. It's uh, more like it. That touch at net uh, sets up the easy Double winner. Four, seven. It's a roll reversal though. It's Minota now chasing Lau down here. Court coverage, speed from Lau. Frustration there, Lau is just allowing Minota back into this a little too easily as far as he's concerned. Uh, 
Might just be 19, Glenn, but he's a, a mature 19, isn't he? He's got a good uh, good head on his shoulders. Yeah, he is. He's, um, he's, he's always developed really, really well as a, as a technical player and his, his shot structure. And as he's got older and stronger, he's just, he's just got better and better. go to uh, the break here at 11 points and it is uh, a complete reversal here because Minota led 11-7 in the first and went on to win it 21-18 but now Lau has uh, a relative uh, degree of control over this uh, second game and uh, given the closeness of these two players and the battles they've had in recent weeks uh, it would not surprise to see this go to three. No it's a little, little, little bit to go yet though but uh, as you'll see from the difference between the Learnco competition and this one with the two Harbour players there, there's, there's no coach involved. Um, and it's a, a policy a lot of associations make. If, if they are from the same place, that they will leave the coaches out. Um, and that may be a bit different when we come Can later on with these different associations involved. But yeah, Edward Lau now has got to move, move on from that 11 points and, and keep that buffer in because Minota's going to come back at it, I'm sure. Certainly uh, puts the onus on the players to figure it out, to make changes uh, on the go. Retrieval skills eventually push beyond uh, their limits. I know it's really hard to see, but that shuttle is incredibly tight to that net when Minota's playing those drops. Right, there's a perfect example of it again. There's just no margin at all. No ability for Lau to get any sort of an angle in retrieving those drop shots. And this is very quickly closed back down. run here now. Five-point run. It is 12-11. That scoreboard not showing the correct score at the moment. It is 12-11. Absolutely superb. Arbanath Minota at his very best, covering so much court, defensive play, and then the awareness to hit the winner. And psychologically, that's huge because uh, I make that six in a row. The scoreboard's yeah. still not updating, but I make that six in a row from 11 7. Edward Lau has seen that lead not only slip away, but he's now in deficit. There's confirmation, 13-11. Just 
trying to make sure all that, uh, all that moisture has left the court because it does turn them quite slippery if, uh, if there's any yeah. moisture there. Yeah, they, they can't allow one little spot to be uh, left out there. So Lau, quite rightly, is uh, very demanding of that aspect of the, the game. Just to check in now. That's uh, the damage done to the court, but I think the damage done to uh, the psyche here of Edward Lau as well. Can he recover? He's now behind when just moments earlier it was four points to the good. That's the starting to look irresistible. The yeah, run of Minota. He's, he's really stepped up a level in that uh, last six or seven points. Anticipation and, and his touches has really come along. That time was deceived by Lau, who continues to fight. Andy Wilt. Talked about it already. He does have very strong mental fortitude. Oh, it's just gone wide. that Lau's under, he's trying to get so tight because he knows what's coming back is, is going to be tighter. Well, Minota just had that little run, didn't he? Um, early in this, this game where he lost his touch, lost his range, lost his concentration, but he certainly put that behind him. And each point now is a point closer to a fourth consecutive national singles title. Lau though, listen to him. Not going to let this go easily, is he? 14, 16. There's margins. Minota is just rushing the top of the net with almost every second shot. Easy points for, for Manoda. Those ones. 14. He has reigned supreme for three consecutive years, Manota. And is that the first error on oh. serve from either player? It's pretty close to it, Glenn. You won't be happy with that. that Stops over. 19, 15. perhaps a uh, first sign of some fatigue uh, 19 15 was the call from holly cho and that's gone wide so that brings up match points Played Lau. I think a broken string here yeah. for Minota. I think I heard that go in that last one. That's why it was uh, was so short. String went. Sub silver. Sixteen. Twenty. Well, 
you would hope for his sake this second racket goes as well as the first one. Oh, it's caught the line. Lau fighting, scrapping. Gonna change the shuttle. Shuttles have been relatively well looked after in this one. It's it's been a, a game of subtlety and caressing of the shuttle, much more so than brute force. And there it is on a touch at the net. Abhinav Manota takes out national men's singles title number four all in succession. And for the third time in four years, it's Edward Lau who is his victim. It's a, a really good win from Manota who just had the one rough patch in the match. Match won by Abhinav Manota, 21-18. 21-17. He really just uh, allowed for a, a moment or two early in that second uh, game, Edward Lau, to get his hopes up. But uh, in the end, just a really consistent level of high performance from the champion. Yeah, you saw a, a, true, a true professional performance there, and he, he kept his concentration throughout the match, made Edward Lau play everything that he could, and really in those vital points, just kept that little buffer ahead kept the pressure on Lau all the time and, and was able to execute his game plan really, really well. Uh, very, very tight around the net. Very much a precision player and uh, he'll be delighted. It couldn't uh, couldn't be with a with a nicer guy, uh, Abhinav Manota. Very, very pleasant and humble and uh, congratulations to him on his, uh, on his national title. Men, uh, I have uh, both uh, men here with me now, and uh, it's commiserations uh, first up because I know uh, this is not the one that you wanted this year, but uh, uh, you're getting closer. You're getting closer. Take that and, uh, and add that to the uh, collection. Congratulations, uh, Edward. Um, so very close. Early in that second game, you just had a bad patch there. I think 11-7 you led at the midway point, and then uh, Marnie put some points on you, and that proved to be the difference. Yeah, uh, I had a good lead and then made too many mistakes, and then Marnie got in his rhythm, and then from there I couldn't get much points. It just makes you hungrier, does it, to come back again? Yeah, uh, always um, train hard after this and then come back next year. Good stuff, mate. Congratulations on, on a great few days. Uh, we now bring in our uh, champion. Congratulations, uh, Abhinav Manota. We'll uh, hand over uh, that one for you, which uh, you will keep. And, of course, uh, the trophy. There we go. As uh, national men's singles champion. Uh, it's a familiar feeling for you. That's uh, four years running now. You kind of like having this, don't you? Yeah, I'm happy to be on the winning side, to be honest, today. Um, uh, in the second game, I had some hiccups. Uh, but um, I think... I got the rhythm back, like Edward just said, um, after 11-7, um, I, I took a step back and then um, again started again, reset the whole thing and then, yeah, I think uh, that's how I got a few more points and then we were on 11 all and then it was going 50-50, so I just had to push myself a little bit harder uh, when it was 50-50, but yeah, um, I'm, I'm glad it worked for me, yeah. Uh, it was a high quality final for, for most of it, especially in the front court, so both of you looked to have your touch at net. Yeah, um, well, I, I guess we both have the same sort of style um, in, the, um, in, the, in the matches, so um, it depends on who, who takes the net first, and then, yeah, it's just a battle, and who gets the touch better than the others, yeah. Is this, do you kind of pinch yourself every now and then? I mean, your story's a wonderful one. Uh, you, you come out to New Zealand, uh, you've, you've made this country your home, and they've welcomed you with open arms, and, and here you are now, four times national champion. Did you ever think that might have happened? No, no. Um, so when I first came here, I was I was in Christchurch, and then I was going to play badminton. Um, but um, my like, luckily, my dad said, "Yeah, just pack your bags, and you never know, you might play there as well." And then, yeah, I got um, I went to their um, Christchurch local club, and then um, one of the coaches said, "Yeah, you, you have a potential. I think you should play." And then one of the um, North Harbour players, Dylan Sojasa, um, seen me, uh, saw me in the under 23 matches, and then yeah, he recruited me here. And that's how I got moved to Auckland, and then yeah, that's how I started playing badminton again. Can you remember that coach's name that said he might have a bit of potential? Um, Alfred Wong, um, of course. Um, he's he's um, he helped me a lot um, when I was in Christchurch. Um, uh, he he coached me there when I was there, and then yeah, pretty much yeah, it was it was really good yeah with him. 
He knew what he was talking about. Congratulations, Armani. Well done. Uh, four times national champion, Abhinav Manota, taking out that final uh, straight games. But it was fiercely fought against uh, Edward Lau. And you certainly think that uh, Edward's time is still to come. That's our first final done and dusted on finals day here at the New Zealand Nationals. Stay with us because coming up next, it's the women's singles. Welcome back. The New Zealand National Badminton Championships for 2020 are being played out here at the Harcourts of Cooper & Co. North Harbour Badminton Centre. And the first of our five finals has concluded. And uh, the quality of play certainly setting the benchmark for what will follow today with uh, Abhinav Manota winning his fourth title in succession. And on three of those occasions, Edward Lau has finished runner-up. So uh, for the 19-year-old, you'd think his time will come. But for Minota, he continues his dominance. A full lineup of finals uh, ready for you. But up next, let's welcome our women's singles finalist. It's Shauna Lee and Sally Fu, our top two seeds, taking to our show court here at the North Harbour Badminton Centre. Glenn Cox alongside, uh, I don't know, you've probably got time to duck out to the office and uh, answer a few emails and what have you. This is uh, your place of work, of course, uh, Glenn. So uh, thank you to your association for hosting these finals. A number of your players involved. They'll be well at home, all of these players here. Sean Lee, of course, from North Harbour and Sally Fu playing out of Auckland. And uh, like the men's final before it this one is a rivalry that is uh, very much building with uh, Shauna Lee emerging as 
a real superstar, still a teenager, of course. Yeah, you're right. And the rivalry started pretty much the, the, this time last year when they when they played uh, in the national final year, and it's continued ever since. And it's and it's pretty even, Stevens, I think, between these two. So, once again, it's uh, really who turns up on the day and, and puts everything together, just pretty much like the, the men's singles final there. Um, everything to play for, and the gloves are off now. The uh, path to the final for these uh, two ladies, Shauna Lee, with uh, pretty comfortable 14 and 14 over Trillo, who had such a wonderful learn coach New Zealand League, and then a 12 and 9 win over Ashley Tan. Ashley Tan with a wonderful tournament, uh, making it through to the semis, whilst uh, Sally Fu with uh, an equally comfortable path, albeit a little bit tighter in that semi final over Caitlin Rosario, winning at 19 and 16. But uh, this is the uh, the match that uh, these two will have had eyes on, I'm sure, the moment the draw came out. So Shauna Lee has uh, turned 17, and I wonder if that's recent days, if not uh, the last few weeks anyway. Certainly was uh, 16 for most, if not all, of that Learn Coach New Zealand League. Sally Fu at 21. They're uh, head to head. That's interesting. Shauna Lee has the advantage 4 2 in head to head matchups. Sally Fu, though, is the three time champion 2016, 17, and 18. That's, of course, Shauna Lee is the defending champion. So yeah. she's got uh, the most recent uh, bragging rights, if you like. And you're, and you're correct. I think her birthday was actually during the week. So she uh, made, right. the, made the mark of 17 and. Uh, Builds it from there and now into the senior ranks. Uh, Might be a pretty cool uh, birthday present uh, a few days late, but uh, Ready to national pay. title, a possibility. Andrew Chan in control of this one. We'll bring the players now together. The final moments before that uh, first serve and the first point is played out. Contrast of styles here. What are, what are we looking to hear from both players, right. Glenn? Well, look. First of all, you've got a right and left hander, so all your all your angles are different from what would uh, would be normal. But um, you've got Sally, who's very very strong, and she want to get some some amazing angles with, with that left hand. So they'll be using all the court, and it'll be a matter of opportunities and, and making sure you keep focus and, and cut those unforced errors out. Make, make that opponent work for everything they get. We'll, uh, I think you'll see the coaches involved this time. And I see uh, Manny Megawati at one end and, and Henry Tam at the other. It's the two of the Lernco coach. Ladies and coaches. gentlemen, on the right, Senegal, Auckland. And my left, Selali, Loft Harbour. Celebrate to serve Lavo Pray. One love. Oh, lovely touch, and that's what. You've alluded to, One. Glenn, it's those angles, that lovely oh. control of the pace of the shuttle. Sally Fu, in, in the opening few points here, we've seen the relative strengths of the two players. Sally Fu with that power. It's a poor serve. Oh. 
Touch from Shauna Lee. Five, so dangerous when oh. she gets that timing right at the top of the uh, the arc there. So. Just called wide. Joey Zola, four, five. Four, five. I'm completely confused. I thought the previous point was called out for Sally Fu, but uh, the players didn't argue the point, Glenn. They just carried on. Must have overruled it, I guess. Well played, Sally Fu, just uh, playing at the non-playing shoulder of Lee, and it's often a very difficult one to react to. start we're level at six all How many times are we going to see it? And we'll run out of superlatives. The touch off that forehand drop, and often it's cross court, isn't it, from Sean Ali? Really, really drags you into that open space. time Sally Fu with the lovely touch there so that's a couple of points one in the front court by Sally Fu Disappointed uh, with that one. It's a, another forehand that to perhaps the, the preparation just wasn't quite there, but both players at their limit through that rally. Ten, eight. This is a, a good little run of points here now for Sally Fu. Yeah, Sally's playing really well. She's really 
pushing, pushing Shauna around the court. Shows a lot. Nine, ten. Dropping in. Ten all. And that one is wide, so it's the turn of Shauna Leeds who uh, just rattle off a few points and uh, go to the breather and a chance to have a chat with uh, Fanny Megawatsi. Shauna Lee with an 11 10 advantage. Nothing in this, though, Glenn. No, not at this stage, and, and really it was a, it, it swung both ways. You had points come to Sean Lee, and then Sally Fu picked up points, and then Sean picked them up at the end, and it was a, it's just toing and froing at this stage as they try to settle down. Yeah, very hard. I, I, I would imagine also very hard for the coaches here to uh, perhaps necessarily highlight anything glaring, anything that uh, they drastically need to change. It really is just a game that, as we thought, would be in the balance. Yeah. And, they, and they will have game plans, and it, it'll be sticking to those and, and executing those properly, and it'll be a continuation of that. At the moment, as, as we've discussed, it, it's very even. So it'll be interesting to see where, who steps up or, or who starts to take an advantage. Eleven, ten, eight. Oh, beautiful again. 12, 10. Something about that left-hander. The ability just to take the pace off the shuttle. And I don't know why, Glenn. I mean, all right-handers, feel free to send in your letters of complaint, but there's just something about that left-handed shot. It, it just always appears so graceful. And uh, Shauna Lee has all the shots in the bag. Catches the net and falls over. Good hit. Not a great deal you can do about that one. No, no, you just uh, accept the apology and get ready for the next point. Uh, just put it on repeat. The highlights package could be that shot, and I reckon there's been four or five already. with a little more pace. Step that little bit of gap now. Mistake, and she's annoyed with herself, Shauna Lee, on the far side of the court. You know, Sally Fu was in trouble there early on in the rally. And the thing that Shauna's got now, she's got a delayed clear into that forehand corner, where she's got the slice drop across the net, which takes you two completely different directions. She also has the art of disguise because uh, it's hard to pick, isn't it? Yeah, really hard. That uh, delayed clear is, is really causing Sally some trouble at the moment, just getting him behind her a little bit.
Tell you what, her defensive retrieval skills are pretty handy too. Sally Fu, I think, thought on a couple of occasions there she might have uh, won the point. Oh. On that occasion, Good she luck. does. Shauna Lee just got her feet stuck Nike. in the mud there a little. This has been quite the second half of this game for Shauna Lee, the defending champion, the 17-year-old. And again, just has enough. 40, Second time, the apology was even more heartfelt. Oh, my goodness. She's apologised. Maybe it wasn't as clean as she Jenny. might have hoped, but Game the audacity point. to even try that. Game point. Well, she really has asserted some authority, has Shauna Lee. It was 11-10 halfway through that opening game, and the she simply game has run away Trinity. with it. Yeah, she, got, she got that really good run of points from 11 to about 15, and that, that once again, it creates that buffer and things like your confidence levels go up, and it makes it all that easier. So, uh, Sally Fu, the reason the umpire has the hand up there is uh, to call for the match referee. And, uh, she won't make the post back It's a request for something. Julie Carroll is uh, bringing out a bag of goodies. Is it a cold spray, I think, uh, Glenn? I think I've that looks exactly what it's point. like. It might be around it's on the shin. shin. It's interesting. So whilst that's playing out, just your thoughts on further thoughts on Shauna Lee here and, and the potential. Long way to go here yet, but goodness me, already one title. She's just turned 17. I mean, she could boss this. She, she could uh, have a real dynasty of sorts here uh, over this women's singles title. She's that good and she's still getting better. Yeah, yeah I mean, she's very much in the, in the development stage as well. She's coming from strength to strength and she's fortunate enough that, you know, She's getting the wins, and that creates the confidence, and, and everything just snowballs from there. So, once again, she got a really good run in that second half of that game. So, if she can continue on with that confidence into this, this next game, it's really, really all for Sally to come back and, and, and try and slow that down and stop it. What does Sally do? Because Shauna doesn't appear to have any weaknesses. I mean, aside from just trying to keep the shuttle in play and hoping for the odd mistake or two. But uh, we talked seconds. about her attacking well, creativity, Sean Lee, but she's pretty handy defensively too. Yeah, and I, th I think at the moment, Sally's length's a little little short. So if she can get some better length and push Sean further to the back of the court and, and start to create some openings, and she's going to have to throw everything at her. She's going to have to attack her um, and, and really create those openings and, and win those points. Sean is not going to give her much. Of course, it, uh, it could be, we might have to rename it Shauna Lee Sunday because she's in three finals today. She will play in the women's doubles alongside Anona Pack, and they'll be favourites in that one against the uh, the giant killers, Tagal and Tan. And then we'll play in the mixed to uh, end our day's proceedings with uh, Edward Lau. So this could be quite the day for a 17 year old with three national titles. A possibility. A long way to go, though. A long way to go. And Sally Fu is quality. She will push Lee as hard as she possibly can. That's the risk, though, isn't it, Glenn, in looking for that depth? Is that, uh, yeah, you just push it too long. Just got to find a way here, Sally Fu. Got to try and stick around.
Judgment's good. Sally Fu would not want this lead to uh, extend much further. Brilliant. Set up by a lovely touch at the net. And Sally Fu will take some heart from that. Yeah, she really worked the court well in that, in that rally. And that's what it's going to take a lot more of, I think, is to create those openings. But as you said, really, really tight around the net, created that weak lift. And uh, a rare unforced error. Is the sort of shot that Sally Fu just cannot afford. It's just too cheap a point to give away. Yeah, you've, Seven, you've really three. got to make them earn, earn their points, and you know, it's, uh, once again, that's that buffer created quite quickly. start now. Henry Tam is uh, encouraging just that from the coach's corner. Oh, there again, though. direction initially to Shauna Lee but uh, just uh, took a little bit too much uh, of a risk Lost her touch here momentarily, Shauna Lee. This era's creeping in, and once again, it's not, uh, it's easy points for Sally, and she's uh, back in the game. Really has lost her concentration here. You can see it in the body language. Just a, a temporary drop of standard, though. Right. Sally Fu will like that, but a speed off the racket. And it's at that whole confidence thing. So Sally's confident to be building there after that, that run of points and, and that dominant, dominant point in that rally. Ten, 
the error counts builds still in the second game off the racket of Sean Elite. Remember, it was Lee leading 11 10 in the first. And this time it'll be Sally Fu who has that one point advantage. So this will be a good opportunity to uh, just further boost that confidence in a chat with the Henry Tam. Sally Fu, whilst uh, Fanny Megawati has a chance to just intervene here, and it is an intervention, I think, with Shauna Lee. Just needs to try and change her fortunes a little as uh, Sally Fu will get some more attention to that uh, right shin. Not sure that uh, it's anything she might have brought into the final. I haven't noticed anything during the playing of this, so perhaps it's just something that's concerned here over the, the course of the last uh, couple of days. Seconds. Doesn't seem to be hindering her during the playing of the points. Seconds. Hopefully it's not a, not something like shin splints, which can be really immensely painful. So hopefully and, it's not too bad. And, and uh, annoyingly difficult to get rid of. Typically requires uh, a bit of rest. Uh, that's, uh, certainly that's, that's the two of us jumping to a big conclusion. But uh, for the moment, it's just uh, annoying, yeah. shall we say. For Sally Fu. Hey. Twelve. Ten. It's remarkable. The uh, mistake rate has just jumped through the roof here for Lee. Out. Service is all. Eleven. And that's uh, better from Fu. Lovely touch. And she needs to capitalize here because you think Lee's going to get her form back. So Fu needs to make hay while the sun shines here. It's interesting also with the. Uh, possible injury to, to Sally Fu, whether um, Lee keeps her concentration. Very, very easy to slip back when, when that sort of uh, interruption happens. Great retrieval. I've mentioned it a couple of times that defensively she is superb as well, Shauna Lee, and she showed every bit of that there. I think, if anything, just the fact the shuttle came back surprised Sally Fu because she had an easy winner, an open court, but couldn't get a racket on it. He's not sure she's expecting that one to come back and uh, Lee threw everything at it. And it's uh, one more back over the net. Could that be Thank you. a significant turning point Thirty. in this final? Oh. Hey. Yeah, she just lost her bearings. Shocking decision again. So that wasn't even close, Glenn. I think that's more hoping it's going out more than uh, knowing it's going out. Sally Fu looking for another one of those little net rolls. Couldn't get it. Oh, 
lifted. Oh. This one is right on a knife edge. Oh, that is the shot. If there's one 15, signature shot, 15. that's it. Half a dozen winners. Yes, and it's so hard to pick that, and it's so tight to the net and the line, it's really hard to, to do much with. Sally Fu was keen for 16, a new shuttle, but uh, 15, Andrew Chan less so. I, I, I'm going to use the word impatient at times in the second game. Shauna Lee. Oh. Brilliant. 17, 16. And it might be those moments that prove to be the difference. X factor. Yeah, well controlled. 18, 16. Is she starting to dial it in again? In critical moments of this match. Oh, brilliant rally and a great finish to it from Sally Fu. Just uh, dishing out a little of uh, Shauna Lee's own medicine. Yeah, she really controlled that really well. Regathering now. Nineteen eighteen, Sally Fu in what has been a topsy turvy second game. Oh, again, superbly judged. Well, if that proves to be the difference between the two, it's a pretty handy difference. That brings up match point. Shauna Lee looking to go back to back at just 17 years of age. As she chases the 2020 National Women's Singles title. Oh, brilliant, Sally Fu. What a response. at its greatest arguably one of the best shots she's played in the match so far Sally Fu three time winner of this title 2016 Junior. 17 and 18 Great. Sally Fu Second match point. Oh, 
And she wins it, and she does win it with a forehand drop. The acknowledgement from Sally Fu. And are we seeing something very special in its early stages here? I'm talking about the career, the most promising career of Shauna Lee, who at 17 years of age wins back-to-back -back national women's singles titles. And this is the first of three finals that she will play today. And Glenn Cox, uh, she has potential. The sky is the limit. For the, I'm going to call her this kid because she is at 17. She is a potential superstar, and she's already very, very good. Yeah, she's, she's very focused, and she, and she trains very hard. And the confidence from winning tournaments like this will, will really help her progress. But, she, you know, she had her moments in that one. Sally forced her in that second game and it really could have gone any way and she had to regroup towards the end of that, uh, that second game to come through with the, uh, the win but Sally was pushing and pushing and it really uh, showed the, the fighting characteristics of Sally Fu but she just managed to, uh, to keep her nose in front at the right time so she'll be very pleased with the win but um, you know, that wasn't a one way ticket that's for real. Thanks, Glenn. Um, Sally, commiserations. Uh, I, I know that's, uh, that's not the trophy you wanted, but uh, it's another final. You've won this title three times. You know what this means, uh, just to be in another final. I've got to ask you, first of all, the, the injury. How is that, and how much of a, a concern was it for you? Um, it was just really tight during the game. Like I, um, At the start, I was moving quite well, then towards the end, I could just feel it, and I just couldn't get into it. It was a very competitive final. Um, she's not bad for 17, eh? She's pretty good, yeah. <laughs> Smart idol. Well done. Congratulations on, an, on another good tournament. Uh, we bring in our winner, though. Congratulations, uh, Shauna. We hand uh, that first one over. You'll get to keep that one. And the way you're going, you might get to keep this for a few years as well. Well done. Congratulations. Back-to-back -back titles. Um, your form in the first game was superb. Did it fall away a little bit in the second? Look to lose your concentration a couple of times? Uh, I think at the start of the set, I was quite focused, and then... Um, she did manage to catch up a bit because I did lose my focus and she was playing quite well as well. That weapon of yours though that you can constantly go to, the deception on your forehand, is, is that something you work on over and over in practice or does it come very naturally to you? Yeah, for sure. Like it, This definitely doesn't, did not come naturally to me. Like I had to practice that hours and hours and yeah. Still need to work on it, but get in there. Yeah. Well, it was a great weapon today. Back-to-back uh, -back titles. You've got three finals today though. Big day. You're looking forward to the rest of it? I'm a bit puffed, but yeah, we'll be resting myself for the next match. Well done, congratulations, uh, great match, a national women's singles uh, title for Shauna Lee, uh, with two finals still to come for the 17 year old today and uh, we'll get the chance later in the day perhaps to wish her a happy birthday for a couple of days ago. Stay with us on our national finals day here at the national championships, coming up next it's the men's doubles.
Well, welcome back in to the uh, North Harbour Badminton Centre here, Harcourts Cooper & Co. Badminton Centre on the north shore of Auckland. It is the uh, Badminton New Zealand uh, National Championships for 2020. And uh, those trophies uh, are being handed out through the day today. And uh, next up, it will be the men's doubles. Already, we've seen a uh, good win for, uh, in the men's singles uh, for Mani Minota. And in the women's singles, it was uh, Shauna Lee going back to back. So uh, that women's title uh, in the hands of a 17-year-old Shauna Lee. Still to come today, the uh, women's doubles, which will uh, again feature Shauna Lee and Anona Pack up against a Tagle and Tan. And in the mixed, it's a busy day, isn't it, for Shauna, because she'll partner Edward Lau up against Oliver Layton davis and Anona Pack. But uh, up next, let's welcome uh, men's doubles final here on a Sunday morning at North Harbour Badminton Centre. And this is, again, a matchup between the top-seeded pairings, but uh, it perhaps still, Glenn Cox, looks a little uneven. You would certainly put favouritism very much in the court of Leighton Davis and Minota, but uh, Riga Ode and Sam Hove had a wonderful tournament. Yeah, and, and Riga and Sam have played a lot together as well, so they've got years of, uh, of a doubles combination, and, and they are... Um, very, very strong. So it'll be, you know, once again, it's um, Minota and, and Ollie haven't played for a little while uh, with uh, no international events on. So they'll be uh, putting their combination back together. So it'll be important that they get a, get a good start. But um, this uh, has everything uh, that you want to expect. In doubles match, some strong, strong power and some, some great defence. It's also something of a, a fairy tale return. Whether it's uh, you stay on that side. a happy and ending to the fairy tale, time edge. will tell. But uh, 2018 final, Riga Oden, Sam Ho were in that final. And uh, Sam, and I, I would imagine that's, uh, we're seeing the evidence of that still with the uh, uh, the support on the knee. And Sam Ho badly injured the knee and had to withdraw from the game. But uh, here they are back again two years later. So their path to the final for Leighton Davis and Minota, it's been... Pretty business-like, uh, 12 and 13 in the quarters and 12 and 10 in the semi-finals over Vong and Wong. And for Ho and Ode, they had uh, almost by reverse a bit of a comfortable win in the semis, 11 and 15, but uh, were pushed 20 and 16 in their quarter-final. Uh, against uh, Danny Ode and Ryan Tong, so the brotherly bragging rights already earned in this tournament by Riga. Can they go on and pick up a title? So head to head the first time these combinations have come up against each other. You mentioned the experience that uh, Ho and Ode have uh, played a lot of badminton together at 26 and 25 years of age. Their respective New Zealand rankings. I, I, you almost don't look at that in too great a focus for this one given that uh, Oliver and, and Arbanav play a lot of international badminton and as we've described uh, Sam Ho in particular has been off the scene with injury so this really just comes down to uh, who's good enough on the day who's the best combination and how well can they click and certainly for the number two seeds Ho and, and Ode they've Ready to got play? to work well together they've got yeah. to combine superbly today. And I, I think without a doubt we've, we've got the two strongest peers on the court so the, the final's the right one it'll, as you say it'll, it'll depend on, on how quickly they can get into their work both pairs. Ollie, can you get the strap um, back in the box? Thank you. But there's, there's no shortage of experience out on that court uh, for this match. And uh, for Leighton Davis and Minota, this is a pairing that has uh, aspirations of playing on a very much higher stage. With, uh, the goal of uh, representing New Zealand internationally, but uh, in particular, the dream of both players I know is the Riga, Olympic Riga. Games. Straps in the box, please. In the box, yeah. Thank you. But, uh, for today, their only focus will be on this national title. Leighton Davis has won this men's doubles title on a couple of occasions before, but uh, the last two occasions. Got to go back away. Ladies so and gentlemen, 2009 and on my 2010. right, Sammy Hall, Riga Ord, Auckland. And on my left, Oliver Leighton Davis, Waikato, Abhinav Manota, North Harbour. Riga Ord to serve to Abhinav Manota. Love all. 
Play. Already signs that uh, a combination of uh, Ode and Ho are pretty keyed up for this. Oh. The feature of the game, he's got very quick hands, hasn't he, Riga? Two, yeah, love. fantastic doubles player. Over. Couldn't get the racket under that Three, quickly enough. Two. Just take a, a wee while to settle down as they uh, get into their work. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. This time it's uh, Minota just uh, snatching at that attempted Four, uh, forehand two. drive. Wide. Surface over. Five, three. Well played, Riga Ode and Sam Ho. Six, three. Cheek. They looked on a couple of occasions there to just be all at sea a little bit, but it, it was the definitive movement from Riga that was getting them out of it. He really wants to boss that front court, doesn't he? Yeah. They were, uh, they very much come to play too. They're in the they're in the zone, so they've got off to a great start. They'll only be further motivated given the CVs and Seven, the reputation of the two three. players they're facing. Yeah, ab absolutely. Very impressive start. Four. Let's just clip the racket of uh, Riga Service Ode. over. Four, seven. of Leighton Davis, very methodical. He'll take his time. Yeah. Oh. Service over. Play Leighton Davis the patience to play without pace, Six. just setting Eight. up the winner with the smash at the second attempt. Oh. He steered that one well wide, just got there too early, got through the shot Service very over. early. 
Nine, I six. think the direction was right, but that's about where it stopped, I think. the umpire urge them on a couple of times. Oh! Just can't lift Service that over. enough. Putting them under some real pressure here. This is a very good start for Sam Ho and Riga Ode. They go to the uh, the drink bottles. 11-7. And this will give the uh, number two seed some real confidence uh, coming into this. You can't help but think, you know, when they put their heads on the pillow last night, uh, that they might have been preoccupied with the record of Leighton Davis and uh, Arbanath Minota could be daunted, could be overawed, but not the case. No. They've come out today and said, uh-uh, uh-uh, we deserve to be here, and we are a genuine chance. 20 they've seconds. Uh, they've certainly come to play. And 20 seconds. They've got into their work quick, and, and, and forcing the issue from the other two and not letting them settle. So, you know, that uh, Leighton Davis and, uh, and Manoda have some work to do. Ollie to receive. And again, it's... Uh, 11, 7... Leighton Davis and Minota who Play. is pushing the envelope in terms of time. As an Service opponent, over. you've got to be ready for that, haven't you, Glenn? You've got to Eight. know the pattern of play 11. and expect these delays and yeah. be ready for a change in pace. Absolutely. It, it, um, it's keeping your concentration on all the time. They might, they just cannot close this gap at the moment. Service over. First time over. on serve, they've just 13, not been on the same page. Nine. Often a combination will know I'm going to serve here, so expect the return to come here. But Doubles constantly battering away. But just to finish on that, Service I mean, over. credit Ho and, and Ode because they're mixing their returns up, aren't they? Yep. 10, 13. And they're well in this match. They're not overawed at all. They're, uh, they've come to play. Play. done this a couple of times, got back to within shouting distance, but then Ho and Ode have kicked away again. Twelve, thirty. 
it's all pretty quick out there. And on, on occasion, Riga Ode's stature is clearly the shorter of the four players, but often that's an advantage. He's able to keep that racket high. Okay, dangerous 13, moments now. Four. Because scoreboard pressure suddenly comes into this as Leighton Davis and Minota level up at 13. Money. There is a word from Kelvin yeah. Sue. Okay. Suddenly 14, a little more buoyant, aren't they? On 13. their toes. The uh, face is a little more relaxed. good so far under intense pressure. Oh! It's a, a bad miss, 15, isn't it, for Minota? 40. Almost looked like one of his single shots. <laughs> Gotta go for that angle. They turn defence into attack very quickly there, Leighton Davis and Minota. And I reckon Ode and Ho might 15. think that was a point that got away from them. Critical moment. 15. And it just extends the lead out to two Good again. Good Leighton Davis had the easiest of winners. Dumped it into the net. Yeah, I think he also realised that Minota had broken a string. So, so he needed was, to he hit was a clean trying winner. awfully hard to get that on the floor. This is mightily impressive. 18-50. And you do feel, I mean, every first game, every first set is crucial, Glenn, but in, in this one you feel especially so for the, the pairing we're looking at here. Yeah, I think it would certainly, certainly be helping their confidence. And that serve was well read by Arbanab Minota. 16-18. Time for one off the frame. 17, 18. That occasion, the movement of Riga Ode, very positive, looking to be very dominant, but I'm sure he just ran straight into the the uh, line of sight there of his playing partner. I think he's expecting uh, a drop to come there, not the not the, the hard drive. Well, 
this is one of those games where you just feel like whose luck is in? Who happens to be leading when you get to 21? Because it has been turn and turn about. We've seen a number of lead changes. brings up a couple of game points so they have turned this they've uh, 20, strung together game point, 18. consecutive points and now one more required to take the opening game oh they both looked and they both left I think they might have both Service said sorry. 1920. Play. Right. Let's now see this serve under the most intense pressure. And they take the opening game, Leighton okay. Davis and Minota, the most First game won by Oliver Leighton Davis, Epinef Minota. Smallest of margins, though. 19. And they'll be delighted, I think, to have repelled the challenge there of uh, Ho and Ode, who they were quality right throughout. They just lost their consistency towards the end of that. And I, I think at 18-16, I think they were up. They might have thought their favourites to go on and win it. The experience there of Leighton Davis and Minota coming through. This one's still very much in the balance. And that's really frustrating because they'll be they'll be sitting thinking, we didn't actually do anything wrong. And they had the lead and they were playing really well. And then for some reason, the opposition's just come through and, and stolen it from, from under your nose type thing. And so there was, one, there was one off the frame. There was yeah. Yeah, a couple of close calls. So there was very little in it, very little. Yeah. And you, you saw the, the quality of Leighton Davis and Minota. There was no panic. Um, they just went about their job properly, served well, returned well, and you know, came out on the right side of the, the two-point margin. So I, I, I think it's almost its energy levels. I don't think they need to change a great deal, do they, Ho and Ode? I, I think they've shown they've got the game plan. Um, Riga Ode clearly is uh, looking to try and control the front court and uh, dominate at the net. Uh, Samuel Ho, the, the bigger of the two players, uh, Trying to take up uh, position at uh, the back of the court, but uh, when they get it right, they're right yeah. in this match. And the, and the defence is so strong, both of them are very composed in the defence, so they pick their options, whether it be blocked in the net or, or re-lift. So, once again, it's just a matter seconds. of carrying on as they have and, and keeping up with the, uh, the, the level of play. Third of our five finals here at uh, Badminton New Zealand National Championships for 2020. Love all. Play. Yeah, that's a way to assert some dominance early on. Love. That's pretty sharp. And again. Two, love. Well, these are dangerous moments, aren't they, for Ho and to Ode? Not just the scoreline, but the manner in which these points have been conceded. So you've, you've suddenly seen a, a, a real big step up in the speed and the, and the power from Minota and Oliver Leighton Davis. It's, uh, they've got to stick with this. Three, 
three, low. been a decade since Oliver Leighton Davis uh, had a, a national title. Seems incredible to, uh, and, and I'm checking now, Glenn, as I make that statement. I'm rechecking because it doesn't seem right, but spends so much of his time, has spent so much of his time overseas. Now back based in New Zealand. Five, love. It's, the, it's those international tournaments that he's been playing for those, for those years that have really developed him into, into the international player he is today. Service over. First sign of a weakness in this game too. One, five. What's the response now from the number two seeds? The Auckland pairing. Just struggling, aren't they, to get a foothold in Service this now? Six, one. Yeah. Come on. Gee, the quarter awareness. I mean, Leighton Davis, the winner, Seven. you called it, Glenn. Great shot, one. but the uh, response from Minota as well. And the return of serve came back to him. He knew exactly where the open court was. Eight. One. We had an engraver here One. on site. I reckon they might just have got the tools out. Not started work just yet, but just getting the tools out and ready. Yeah, they've, they've really got into their work Ten. well on this set. It's, it's gone up a whole couple of levels in, in the intensity and the speed and the strength. Go and get a drink, and uh, they will savour it. Will Leighton Davis and Minota, and it just highlights, uh, Glenn. We, we sensed it. I think both of us how important that first game was, and it's really just knocked the stuffing out of Ho and and, and Ode. And also, as you've described, the increase now, uh, Leighton Davis and Minota recognise the need to go up a level and really put the foot on the throat. And, the, and they've had the advantage of, of playing in the um, Learn Coach League, where they've been playing matches and. and um, Odin Ho really haven't had the same match preparation that, that these guys have had. So mm. that, that really makes a difference when you come into a match of this intensity. 20 seconds. 20 seconds. They look very relaxed. This pair, though, look a little more tense and subdued. 11. 1. Gone is the, uh, the bounce, the spring and the step and the chatter that we Play. saw throughout most of the first set. Service over. Two, eleven. Show such composure when, frankly, in the middle of that rally, he was all over the <laughs> shop. <laughs> they just about stood on each other's toes, but they kept their cool. Thirteen, two. This one now has very much a 
and inevitability about it, you feel. Really, really notice the speed difference now. Shuttle been taken a lot earlier, hitting into gaps. It's, uh, it's really lifted. Service over. Three, 40. Well, the scoreboard tells you they have to go on a considerable run here. Oh, and you cannot afford that sort of mistake. That was a real opening. Scrambling from Leighton Davis and Minota. 15-3. Context uh, this pairing on the screen, ranked 67 in the world. Men's doubles, that's where their focus lies. Down the middle. Leighton Davis, of course, nowadays uh, Glenn back in New Zealand, isn't he? Permanently three. and working full time, so finding that balance between work and and, and, uh, and more opportunity to train with Minota and in, in the, uh, the national squad. And, and I'm sure he won't mind me saying that uh, he didn't necessarily see that opportunity five three. or six years ago. In, in fact, it was possibly what saw him head away. But, but he loves the setup here. He loves the work being done here with the associations and with Badminton New Zealand. Oliver Leighton Davis Davis and, uh, and he, he said to me he felt very four, comfortable coming home. Yeah. And, he's, and he's very much a mentor and a, and a, uh, and a leader for, for that squad and that group of players as they come through. So he's got a, he's, he's got multiple roles in that uh, in that squad, Davis including his own over. training. Eighteen. Yeah, full-time work these days in sales. Still looking to maintain very high standards on court. Might want to see that one back again, though. string go and it's a couple of points away now and let, let's just take the chance as well Service to again over. acknowledge uh, Samuel Ho and Riga Ode with a remarkable five. story a couple of years ago playing in Months. this very match Sam Ho seriously injuring the knee and uh, what a return to uh, be back on the national stage again and that was it in Wellington North uh, I, was, uh, I was there and it, um, Six, it was certainly a 19. really nasty, nasty injury. I think Micah Phillips and Dylan Sajasa might have been the, the beneficiaries over. in taking the title, but uh, that one brings up match, match points point now six. for Oliver Layton Davis and Avanat Minota. First game, very, very tight. Second, less so. Celebrations Service will be delayed over. for a moment or two. Seven twenty. And that Eight. wraps it up. Comprehensive performance in that second set, especially. But they battled through some really tough moments in the first to win it 19 and then seven in the second.
and it is a national title. Another one for Abhinav Minota. So two from two today, and for Oliver Layden Davis, it's a decade since Match his last on that occasion Oliver with Lee Henry Tam back in 2010. Today adds another men's doubles title to his resume, and uh, it really was a final that uh, the number two seeds had to win the opening set. Yeah, I think um, it really was that that first set was was critical, and uh, by just coming out on top, uh, Leighton Davis and Minota really were, were able to kick into gear into the second set and, and at the level they were, were used to. Very, very hard for Uden Ho to, to play at that level when you haven't had the opportunity to play matches uh, leading in at that intensity and that, and that level. So very, very hard for them. But um, Minota and Oliver Leighton Davis really uh, showed what international doubles is all about in that, in that second game. Very, very quick, very, very strong. Thanks, uh, Glenn. Congratulations, guys, um, on uh, on making it through to the final. I, I know, oh, I know this is not the the trophy you wanted to uh, receive, but I've just got to say, it's great to see you back. And I mean, two years ago, I think we're still seeing the evidence of it. But how, how cool is this to be back in a national final? Uh, it was kind of unexpected, to be honest. Well, we tried our best and we made it this far. And pretty happy with it. Was it pretty crucial that you guys won the first game? How important was that in, in, in the overall wash-up? Yeah, I mean, we were trying to build momentum. We thought we almost had it, you know, as, as you saw. But, um, you know, hey, we came in three weeks of preparation. Here we are today, but well, we're happy. A great tournament, guys, and congratulations. Commiserations, but congratulations. Well done. As we uh, welcome in now our uh, champions, uh, congratulations, uh, Ollie, Armani, congratulations. I'll hand over the... Uh, personal mementos and of course the uh, the silverware ollie that's been a while that's a decade since you had your hands on that one i've just aged you haven't i by saying that but uh, 10 years ago and i think you might have been playing with a couple of guys that are either now coaching or not playing but uh, how special is that after 10 years yeah it is um it's a national title so it's yeah it's always uh, pretty special to, to win and especially after such a long time i think yeah last one was with henry so yeah just really happy to be honest so. How important, I mentioned it to, to Riga, how important was winning that first game? Because if they had their tails up going into the second, you guys might have been in trouble. That was a hugely competitive first set, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I think um, we had some issues in um, the first game, um, but a lot we communicated in the, in the very end, and then that's how we got it back. Um, I think we were down um, quite a lot in the first set and the towards the end, um, but I think, yeah, the only, we just switched it, um, and then, yeah, and we got the points. And then I think in the second game, I think, yeah, we were pretty pretty comfortable what did you do I mean did you talk about it because it looked like the pace not necessarily of the shuttle but getting to the shuttle you looked to be getting there so much more quickly in the second yeah we did and I think it was we made a change at the end of the first like they came out quick and they came out really well actually um, with, with the racket especially so there's a lot of speed and, and the flat stuff and we sort of tried to challenge them at that and it wasn't really working for us so yeah towards the end of it we just took the pace out a little bit more and managed to get the shuttle coming up a bit higher to us and then that sort of got the legs going a bit, bit better as well and we could carry that through um, to the first three and the second as well. Listen I know there are so many unknowns but final question what's next? I mean, internationally, we can't go anywhere, I know, but uh, what's next? What, what's on the horizon for you guys as a combination? Um, probably not anything uh, for the combination, but we're just uh, training and um, we're just going to build up uh, for, for the international tournament for next year, if it happens. Uh, but yeah, no, we're just going to train hard, basically, and then um, the next competition we'll be playing, hopefully, in, um, we plan to play in end of November. Uh, but yeah, if, if, if that happens, then yeah, we'll go for it. Otherwise, we'll look forward to the next year. And still chasing that Tokyo dream? Yeah, certainly. Um, yeah, like you say, there's, there's nothing on the international horizon for, for a while. So I think uh, Coach Riggie just put up the plan yesterday. So there's a lot of hard work <laughs> um, coming up over the next eight weeks. So we'll just get stuck in and then be as ready as we can for when the opportunities do come. Good stuff. Congratulations, guys. Taking out the uh, men's doubles here at uh, the National Championships, uh, Oliver Layden Davis and Abhinav Minota. And it's 10 years between drinks for uh, Ollie, so he's delighted to get his hands on that trophy once again. That's three of our five finals concluded now here at the National Champs, but uh, stay with us. Still two great finals to come. They both feature Shauna Lee. Next up, it's the women's doubles.
Welcome back on uh, Super Sunday, uh, finals day at the Badminton New Zealand National Championships for 2020. Of course, deferred from their original date back in June. We know why they've been deferred in this crazy, crazy year that is 2020. Already today, we've seen wins for Abhinav Manota in the men's singles, uh, Shauna Lee in the women's, and just then, it was a win and comprehensive in the end after a very tight first set, but so they ran away with it, Leighton Davis and Minota in the men's doubles. Our remaining two finals will feature Sean Lee, and that means I can tell you that in between, we will have a 40-minute break, and uh, that'll be a chance to relive some of the highlights from the Learn Coach New Zealand League, but do not miss the final match. That mixed doubles promises to be uh, a delightful one here today. But up next, let's uh, welcome our women's doubles finalists here at the Nationals for 2020. I was pretty sure he was about to emerge, Vic Kim, and he did, and he did eventually, leading the, uh, the players out. And uh, this one is, well, it's an all North Harbour affair. So all four players from the Home Association and uh, Glenn Cox, who by day runs the uh, Harbour Association and uh, joins me in commentary, will be delighted to see this. And I'm sure delighted to see Alyssa Tagle and Ashley Tan in the final. Vic Kim and Andrew Chan are the officials uh, for this one because uh, Shauna Lee and, and Ona Pack we would have expected. But uh, Tagle and Tan, I, I, I would suggest, are showing the benefits of their participation Black. and their improvement mm -hmm. through that Learn Coach New Zealand mm -hmm. League and coming into the Nationals mm -hmm. with that form. Yeah, I mean, that, that was a great opportunity you, for them to, to get this sort of level of side. competition. Two minutes. Um, I mean, these, these four girls train multiple times a week all together, so they'll know each other in, uh, back to front. You've got Ashley Tan, who has, in the previous times, partnered with Shauna Lee and, and did so during the Learn Coach League as well. So... They'll be well aware of uh, what's at the other end of the court and basically it comes out and Tan, Tackle and Tan have really got everything to play for, nothing to lose, so all the pressure's on the other pair. So the path to the final, uh, Lee and Pack are pushed uh, by Leung and Trillo in that quarterfinal, 17 and 15, then comfortable in the semi-final over Zhang and Zhao, whilst uh, Tackle and Tan also struggled to come through that initial quarterfinal against... Uh, one of the other young superstars from the Loon Coach League, Rowan Apalasuk and Janice Jiang, both the youngsters. But then uh, 17 and 17, that's a very impressive win over Calder Hawkins and uh, Jasmine Ng. So they've earned their place in the final, have Tagle and Tan. And uh, they will have the bravery that is uh, fairly typical of a young combination. Here's the head-to-head uh, -head lineup. Uh, Sean Lilly at 17, but uh, just of course earlier this morning crowned national singles champion. Anona Pack, uh, the most experienced of the four at 26 years of age. Whilst uh, for Alyssa Tagle at 20 and Ashley Tan at 16, they uh, have their careers in front of them. First clash between the two, but as uh, Glenn has mentioned, they'll know each other very well. All four players part of the North Harbour Association. And it'll be not too dissimilar to, the, to that men's final where you've, you've got one pair who really have to get into it quick to, to step up to the level of the other pair. And, and that start is all important in, the, in this match. So I Pack also will back up a bit. Ready to Mention play. Shauna Lee because it's kind of her day. She's in three finals. She's already won one. But Anona Pack also will back up and play in the mix uh, alongside Oliver Layden Davis. So hence the uh, requirements uh, for the welfare of the players that there will be that break between matches. So the mixed doubles will be played after a, a 40 minute break, but for the moment our attention is uh, entirely on this women's doubles final. <coughs> I haven't really asked you, Glenn, in any of the earlier ones, but who do you fancy here, an upset, or do you think the experience combination gets it done? Yeah, probably the, the telling person this one is, is Anona Pack, because her experience in, is far beyond the others, and she can really take it by the scruff of the neck and control this match, so if she's, uh, if she's in the zone, that's going to be very, very hard for the other pair to, to come Elisa through. Elisa Tegel, Ashley Tan, Dos Harbour. 
and on my left, Sauna Ali Aruna Park, those are Aruna to serve, Park to serve to Ashley Lee, Labo, play. Soba, one, low. Just while we're early in this final, a chance to a shout out to uh, Justine low. Villegas. If, Justine, if you're watching. Justine suffering a, a knee injury in the Service final over. of the Learn Coach New one, Zealand League. Two. I hope the recovery is already underway. There's no doubt, Glenn, that she would have played a big role on finals day here today. Yeah, she oh. well, well would have been involved, I think, right through, right through the tournament. But uh, it looks like the, uh, the knee might be an ACL. So uh, we're just looking uh, at what surgery uh, she may require and then back on that road to recovery for uh, the 2021 season. Oh, goodness me. That's over. Three, two. That almost took up residence on the net. In, in so these rallies. Three, oh. And you've got that right left hand combination there on the other end and just keeps you thinking. Service over, four, all. And again, all players from the same association, there'll be no coach intervention during this one. Out. It's a good call from Vic Kim. You could see that the line over. judge was uh, Five. perhaps a little four. unsighted. That's what you want from the chair, very clear. Service over, five, oh. Play. Patience, both combinations really. Six, so in the end, it was five. a lead that pounced for the winner.
Oh, wonderful. Not the finish for Ashley Tan, but just the, uh, again, the patience from both combinations, and we are in for a treat here in this final. Yeah, if we've got a few rallies like that, we might be, not be going home until after dinner. Soba, A, six. It really does require quite a shift in the thinking of Shauna Lee, doesn't it, uh, Glenn? That number of the shots that she would automatically go to in the singles game. They're uh, more easily cut out here in the doubles. That one's uh, just inside the line. Nine, six. Yeah, it certainly, it certainly changes the, the whole perspective of what you're playing. And when you're playing with someone at the other end, or at the same end, what your positioning is. And more importantly, your shot selection, what you're hitting into what spaces. 10, six. Seven six in bubble. And they will go and have a drink and have a chat about it. And the the difference in experience uh, is highlighted in that uh, Tagel and, and Tan have the sum total of zero national titles at senior level between them. And I have no doubt that that will change. That they will win national titles. But uh, contrast that with Anona Pack who on her own has seven in mixed and women's doubles. Four times women's doubles champion in 2016, 17, 18, 19, looking to make it five in a row. And uh, 20 second. she's uh, 20 won second. those titles, Glenn, with three different partners, Gina yeah. Kim, Christine Zhang, and most recently, Erina Calder Hawkins. So showing her versatility and a comfort Play. level with the different playing partners. 11-6, play. Starting to assert Twelve, some control. Six. Yeah, there's, there's a real element of needing to be patient and, and setting your partner up in, in ladies' doubles. The fences are so strong. We're seeing some wonderful badminton, and really that scoreline at the moment does not do Tagle and Tan justice. So many of these rallies have been so fiercely fought. Just doesn't, doesn't uh, creep over that one. Seven, 
13. Service over, 14, 7. My goodness. 15, seven. I, I, Glenn, I was waiting for the out call. <laughs> I, I thought that had no right, no chance to go in. It, it, it's truly one of the shots of the day. Yeah. I'm not sure we got actually two calls. I'm not sure the linesman was, was that totally convinced. But what a, what a shot to finish that oh, rally. My goodness. here now uh, the unseated pairing and they need to just to fight their way out of this if not to save this first set then just to give themselves a little confidence it's pretty tough mind you isn't it Glenn uh, against a combination the class of uh, pack and Lee. And, and you notice that although the defence is very strong, you know, the defence isn't going to win matches, unfortunately. And uh, if they continue to, to hit up and, and their proposition hit down, it's uh, going to be a long day at the office. We saw it in the singles. We see it in the doubles. That 18, beautifully deceptive seven. drop off the forehand from Sean Lee. isn't it, for Tagle and, and Tan just to feel that 18. they can get a foothold in the match. Yeah, just to get that little bit of confidence back. Leave it. So it's over. Nineteen ten. When it's your day, it really is your day. So it's over. Eleven nineteen. Over 20 game point 
11. Arguably the most dominant opening of any of our finals so far today. Can't quite yes. close it out, but uh, I think it's just a matter of time 12. for Lee and Pack. 20. Just deserting Lee. 13, 20. Again, pick up another couple of points here. Go into the, the break and just feel that you've got some momentum. Oh, it's an owner Eight. pack with a stylish way to round out the opening set. They win the opener. 21-13. And uh, well, when I, th I think you highlighted it, but perhaps the difference is the the edge on attack with Lee and Pack. But uh, Tagel and Tan are not giving too much away defensively, but when the opportunities present, they're struggling to find the opportunity to get the shuttle on the floor. Oh. Yeah, and I, and I think, you know, although the scoreline probably is one of the easy opening games, I actually think the comp competitiveness in the rallies is that probably the most outstanding that's been in, in the matches we've had so far. Uh, they're long rallies. Both pairs are really strong on defence, but I think uh, Pack and, and Sean Lee are really the ones that are, that are attacking a little bit more and, and creating those opportunities. So it looks like we've got uh, Nico Tagle, uh, Alyssa Tagle's brother, in there trying to help them along a bit, give them some uh, words of encouragement and advice to to see how they can attack the second game. Yeah, it was uh, it was great to see Nico. Uh, not if you, I think it was Jonathan Curtin, wasn't it, that was ruled out with injury uh, in the final. But uh, Nico Tagle called into the final as a replacement uh, in the Learn Coach New Zealand League. He's coming off the back of uh, an injury, which, excuse the pun, I think was a, a back injury. Back I think yeah. he slipped a disc. Yeah, in the, um, in the later stages, it was a back, and he's previously had some couple of major knee knee issues uh, over the last uh, season or two. So. So he, he takes his seat there in the uh, coach's corner, but uh, having given some advice, but... Uh, 20 seconds. I, th I think this was always one of seconds. those finals where this combination, Tackle and Tan, had to have their best day. Had to have their best day to be in it. And, and that's no disrespect to them. It's just that they're up against such a quality combination. You've got the, the two-time... Uh, having won this morning, the two-time singles champion up and, and an owner pack who's Second just game. superb in doubles and mixed. And they lead having won the first 21-13 lead. Double play. That's over. One low. Given One, what we've four. described and the task they are facing, they can't afford to give away cheap points. curious part Three, about playing in two. finals action is that this pair together now and when this concludes 40 minute break and then they face off in the mix oh. 
So it's no surprise that there's such a, a camaraderie and a, and a friendship amongst the, the top players, uh, Glenn, that they're as often on each other's side as they are against each other. Yeah, it can, it can really just depend on which tournament they're playing in each time. And, uh, the whole circle can move around there very easily to playing with the Five, person at the other side of the net one two. week to with them the following week. These are critical moments now for the pairing of Tan and Taggle. That's good. That's over. Three, five. in good form today, Shauna Lee. Saw lose her way Six. briefly in that women's final. But for the most part, she's been very much on song. And as I say that, it's one of those that lapses in concentration. Four. Six. Hold. Service over. Seven. Four. Similar Four. fashion to the men's doubles final. You, you sense this could pretty quickly get out of hand for Tagle and Tan here. Doubles over. Five, eight. well play because the alternative is they Six, roll their sleeves eight. up and scrap their way back into it oh. and they are doing just that seven eight Such a silent Ten, uh, way to be seven. beaten, isn't it? When uh, Shauna Lee just slices across that shuttle, takes all the pace away. Pretty handy there from uh, Alyssa Tagle. By 11 8 interval. So they haven't uh, rolled over here, Tagle and Tan. They were down by uh, about three or four points early and they've just stuck at it. 11 8, they're far from finished in this final. And Zanona Pack and Shauna Lee are going to have to stay right at the very peak of their powers here. 
Yeah, I don't think they can afford to, to take the foot off the throttle at any time. All the other pair are going to be straight back in this, and they've really got to try and keep that, that little bit of a, a buffer there right through as much as they can. But the other girls certainly are here to play, and um, certainly through that middle stage of that, of that game there, they were pulling points back quite comfortably. 20 seconds. 20 seconds. Shauna Lee with the shuttle in play. hand, looking to add a second title to her burgeoning CV, having already won the women's singles today. Oh. As for Tagle and Tan, they're looking to uh, pick up a first. Nona Pack will get us underway. Play. Play. Really good spot down that middle. 12, 8. Yeah, it's proven fruitful a, a few times, hasn't it? Yeah, it's a great, great place to attack. This is the risk now for Tagal and, and Tan is that they, eight. the body language, their heads drop a little, they start to play the scoreboard rather than finding that ability to just reset point after point. That'll help them. Zoba, nine, 14. Zoba, 15, 9. Well played, Ashley Tan. Zoba, 10, 15. final one point at a time. It's easier said than done though to retain that short term focus. Oh. Uh, finding a way at the moment though. 15. out of the balloon, Zoba, doesn't it? 16, 12. Just caught the top of the net that time. Instinctively, there, Anona Pat steered it away for the winner. Um, 
mountain to climb now. Yeah, Nona Pack very strong when they're in front of the net. 12. Finishing strongly. 19, 12. A lot of courage. They've played a lot of great badminton just to get to the final. Point. But ultimately, Two. it's going to come up just short, I think, for Alyssa Tagle and Ashley Tan as uh, Shauna Lee and Anona Pack now have multiple match points for a national title. Oh, not just yet. Any time's a good time to have the, uh, the shuttle roll over that net cord. A couple of quick points and let the nerves settle in a bit, maybe. Game. They close it out, though, and that is uh, very impressive from... Shauna Lee, she adds a second title today, having won the singles, and Anona Pack adding an eighth title across mixed doubles and women's doubles, and that is the fifth consecutive year that Anona Pack has won the women's doubles title and has done so with four different partners. She is the queen of women's doubles here in New Zealand. Good tournament for Tagal and Tan, but ultimately they just came up against a combination with that bit more class today. Yeah, the good... Anona Pack and um, Sean Lee really came out and, and did the job. They were expected to win, but still have to get out there and, uh, and perform. Anona Pack very, very strong in the front of the net, and they attacked their opponents uh, quite frequently. And if you're hitting up in, in doubles, it's always going to be a struggle to come out on the right side of the scoreboard. So unfortunately for Tagal and Tan, they, they were lifting too much. Their defences were strong. But at the end of the day, if, you, if you're lifting all the time, then the pair that is attacking is, is notoriously going to come out on top. But really good match for them. First time they've played together, so I think they'll be pretty happy with where they ended up. But a uh, national title again for Sean Lee and the Pack. Thanks, Glenn. Um, hey, guys. Welcome. I know it's not the result you wanted, but uh, congratulations on, on making it through to the final. And uh, we've got those uh, runner-up trophies for you to uh, take away. And uh, I've got to say that how much confidence did you take on the back of the Learn Coach League coming into this weekend? Um, quite a bit. I think it gave me a lot more experience to play with the older seniors, so it was quite good. And, and coming into the final, what was the approach? You knew you were up against a, a quality pairing, but what was your approach coming into today? Um, but yeah, we for sure know uh, Anona and Shauna would be really strong opponents, but um, considering it's our first time actually playing together, um, it was still a good result to make the final. So yeah, we're still happy about that. Absolutely. Congratulations on a great nationals. Well done, guys. We'll bring our uh, champions across now and uh, get their, uh, their gifts. There we go, guys. There's the ones that you can uh, put on the mantelpiece. Uh, Anona, I think that's the eighth. Uh, congratulations. Um, across mixed and doubles, the eighth title. That's two today for you, just today. Um, and it looked on the scoreboard easier than I think it was because a lot of those rallies from our, our position anyway, they were tough rallies, long rallies. Uh, yeah, um, we definitely had to fight to win. They're obviously two very strong players as well. Like We play them at training often, so they'll know how we play. So yeah, it was a fight, but we got there in the end. 
Um, and you love this occasion. That's five years in a row, women's doubles champion with four different partners. So what's going on? Either you don't get on with your partners or you're just happy uh, pairing up with someone new every year. But congratulations, title number eight for you across mixed and doubles. Yep. Um, yeah, so I don't know what to say, actually. <laughs> She just doesn't get along with her no. partners. <laughs> That's what I was thinking too, Shauna. But yeah, it won't be her next year, so might be a different person. Yeah, one and done. That's it. Um, it is special though, isn't it? And and again, coming into a nationals with the form and with the, the high level of competition that you guys have had in recent weeks, how beneficial was that? It's actually pretty good. It's a build up to, to nationals as well. Actually, I didn't know nationals was on the week after the league. I thought it, there was a week gap. Yeah, but yeah, it's what it is. Now, you guys now put the friendship aside. We're going to take a 40-minute break, and then you come out as enemies. You're going to, you're going to, oh, there never was one, yeah. Shauna, was there? But um, just, just, just give, give, give me your thoughts going into this mixed final. Give me your thoughts on what you need to do well to win that. The boys can do everything. <laughs> Leave it to the boys? Yeah, we'll let the boys battle it out. We're just in one corner. I know, I know that's not going to be the case. Well done, guys, on the national title. Congratulations, and we'll see you soon for the uh, for the mixed final. So, Shauna Leap and Anona Pack having a bit of fun. Oh, guys, I didn't uh, I didn't mean to keep that. I didn't mean to keep that. I'll make sure they get that. Uh, but uh, having a bit of fun on the back of that women's doubles final. But so uh, they will return to play in the mixed final, and that means we take a 40-minute break. So please stay with us. We've got some wonderful highlights coming up from that Learn Coach New Zealand Badminton League. I think we're going into a couple of those golden game situations, which were a lot of fun. And then we will be back in 40 minutes for the final final here today at the National Champs. It's the mix still to come this afternoon.
Oh, welcome back, everyone, as we uh, take a short breather from our national championship uh, finals here today at the North Harbour Badminton Centre. I can tell you that our mixed doubles final, uh, it's the final match today, that will get underway at 1.35. So we're not too far away, 1.35. But uh, it gives us the chance to go back and uh, relive some of the highlights, and there were so many from the Learn Coach New Zealand Badminton League. And this is one of our golden game scenarios. Of course, there were six matches played in a tie, and if it went to 3-3, we went to a golden game. This is one game to 11 points to decide the winner on the night. And the first one that we're going to show you is the Tigers and the Dragons from round six. And this is a mixed doubles golden game. So golden game to decide it. One game to 11. It's, it's academic in terms of the points table. We, we know already the Tiger Brokers Tigers before tonight were into the final. And equally, the Huawei Dragons could not make it into the final. They will play off for third and fourth next week, but uh, they can be very proud of their performance here tonight. Let's, let's bring it on. It's golden game time here to decide this one tonight at the Waitakere Badminton Centre. This is where uh, the composure of the players can play a part as well. The, uh, the heart rate will be up a little. Good luck. Good luck. Some, the likes of, of Edward Lau in particular, Good he's luck. the only one of the four that's just come off court. So he's fresh, he's warm, he's oh, okay. Would you guys like green or black? Yep. But the yep. others, so green? they face that okay. challenge, don't they, Ollie, of uh, oh, yep. having cooled down. They've had to stay on yep, edge knowing... Good this was a possibility and now they have to mentally and physically be ready to go again yeah absolutely and I'm sure that's something that, that they'll all have taken on board and, and prepared themselves well so looking forward to, to seeing this one get underway I think again look for Suajasa to lead the Dragons pair in this one of course they're always trying to push the tempo a little bit like he usually, he usually does really rhythm, momentum, confidence player uh, when he gets his tail up Final introductions uh, for our players. Alyssa Tagle at 20 years of age, of course, uh, combined with uh, Dylan Sajasa earlier tonight. They won the very first match on court tonight. So can they bookend it and uh, pick up a memorable win for the Dragons? Justine Villegas, who uh, partnered Jonathan Curtin in defeat for Sojasa and Tagle. So a chance for her to atone for that one. This time with a different partner in crime, though, in Edward Lau. And he's got to be a contender for the Crystal Ashley Designs MVP, Edward Lau. He's already featured in uh, a wonderful singles win over Oscar Guo. And then uh, came back and uh, sent them to a golden game with that win in the mixed with Janice Jang. And Dylan Sojasa, who uh, has had a win and a loss tonight. A win in the mixed and a loss in the men's doubles. So they must, first and foremost, both combinations must eliminate unforced errors. And we've just seen in the mixed doubles that uh, concluded regular play tonight, if you like, that uh, the serve was crucial uh, and points were won and lost uh, at times far too quickly on serve. Yeah, they, they were in that sense that those first four shots obviously in the, in the mixed situation are, are really important but I think again it's perhaps where the, the singles background can come into a bit of a disadvantage in the mix, the transfer Ready over to the play. mixed game whereas I don't think we'll see as much um, from these four players on court in, in this golden game here but you know let's not speak too soon hopefully for the for the quality of the match that, that we won't but I'm sure these again all four are used to being in a, in a pressure situation and They've got a serve that's going to be stable and, and hold up. Alyssa just looks so serene, doesn't she? She she doesn't she'd be a good card player. <laughs> doesn't give too much away. So looks like uh, she'll be fine. In fact, it's it's been really impressive across the entire competition with the composure shown by the players. On very few occasions have we seen players rattled or lose their nerve. And I expect that uh, they'll all be good to go here now in this final week of round robin in the big pressure moments. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, the Tiger Broker Tigers, represented by Edward Lau and Justine Villegas. 
And on my left, the Huawei Dragons, represented by Dylan Sajasa and Alyssa Tagle. Huawei Dragons to serve, Alyssa Tagle to Edward Lau. Love all. Play. Golden game to 11. Pretty good rally to get us underway. Four, four. Is Dylan Sajasa keyed up or what? One love. Dylan Sagasa, look at him. Goodness me, he's a man possessed. You talk about leading from the front, Ollie. How keen is he to make sure that his Huawei Dragons finish the round robin on a high? He also talked about being absolutely ready from, from Love All at the start of a golden game, and boy, is he there. Tam, coach of the Tiger Brokers Tigers, just looks a little non plus by it all, just soaking it up. Another week, another golden game for him, isn't it? Body of Tagle and she couldn't get the racket there in time. So it's over to all. Accurate, powerful, and vocal. And of course, we get to do all of this again tomorrow night with the final match in the round robin that has so much riding on it. Essentially, it's a shootout for the final between the Hay Tour Hawks and the One Pure Wolves. That one will get underway at 7 o'clock tomorrow night. It's long. So Lau and Villegas are just quietly been contributing. And we'll level at three all. Yeah, Villegas showing early signs of really playing well at the moment. He's having he's brave enough to step in on the net as well, take chances. Anticipate but not over. Look too much to, to take that chance and be over aggressive is the word I'm looking for. First mistake on a serve. I think this is going to be point for point the whole way through. Oh. He's even shouting when he doesn't swing the racket now. Five, four. Clever option that last one from Sir Jasset. 
still went hard at it. Played a little cut as well. Just gives it that in-between pace between the full smash and the slow drop, which he usually uses. That's uh, the issue where the adrenaline is flowing for both Tagle and Sajasa. points on serve. Oi, oi. How many times? One, two, three. Seven, five. Yeah, this is as good as a, a little mini break here, just skipping clear by two. Five. And now three. Well, you sense this means so much to the Dragons if they can get over the line. Eight, and they're very close now, very close. They can't afford to button off, they can't afford to relax. But at 9-5, they are in control. Still in control, but with the tension rising. Seven, nine. You get composure from Lau and Villegas, both of them in that rally at different moments. Oh, this is incredible stuff. Rattling off three points. Eight, but still, five. they are balancing right on the edge, the Tigers. Oh, that's why GI wondered whether the serve might have fallen short. I think that was inch perfect. They just clipped the top of the net, but I think they had enough pace on it. Oh, it's unraveling for the Dragons. And how impressive is this? The Tigers on the prowl, big time. Match point, tie point. Ten, match point, nine. Five in a row for the Tigers now. Oh, what a rally. What a rally. Listen to the urgency. Service over. Ten more. Yeah, great rally from both pairs. Offense changed hands a couple of times throughout that. Great 
terrific net exchanges as well. Oh, I tell you what, if the Dragons can win this next point, I reckon Dylan Sajasa is going to raise the roof. Oh, beautiful touch, Lau. Yeah, great variation from him as well. The majority of his returns go at the body of the, of the back player. I think this time is dead for the little angle into the midcourt. Great choice. There's the tension. Second match point. Tie point, of course, in Golden Game. And they've done it. Oh, they've done it, and look what it means. Dylan Sajasa yells loudest and yells last. So Jasa and Tagle have won at 13-11, and that is quite brilliant. You do not begrudge them that win at all, the Dragons. They've had their struggles in this Learn Coach New Zealand League, but that, Oliver Layden davis is why this format is just so intriguing and so captivating. What a wonderful spectacle, the race to 11 turned into 13. Yeah, well, it just makes you think.
waiting for uh, Anona Pack and Shauna Lee to have their uh, required rest, having played and won the women's doubles. So that match still to come, and I can tell you that uh, in the background, the players are warming up and are not too far away. But let's uh, uh, relive one more highlight, and again, it's a golden game that we go to before these trophies are handed out, as we now relive the, uh, the Wolves and the Hawks in a golden game from the Learn Coach New Zealand League. This was also from the final round-robin section. Uh, as a part of our presentation, of course, at the end of uh, this match, we'll have the Crystal Ashley Designs MVP. And uh, it may well depend on the way this Golden Game goes. Welcome. Justin Zork. Welcome. Is our uh, umpire, Kevin Smith, service judge. So the players, uh, they're well versed now. In this uh, golden game situation, everyone will have been warming up to a degree. They may have had the inside word, some players, because uh, the coaches will know perhaps their first okay, players, choice uh, match that they were going to rat eliminate. Wing? Rat, sure. Rat. Okay. And who's the receiver? Sure. So if, if a coach knows that they're going to, for example, the mixed doubles, I think, was taken off there pretty quickly right from the get-go, then uh, mixed doubles players can rest easy, know that they're not going to be involved. But uh, Unless they're doubles players. As well. <laughs> Which we know for the Wolves is, is pretty much how it, how it works. And I think the Wolves, based on, on their, their lineup, and each time I've seen them at the Golden Game, have taken the singles options out. So yes. that it's, it's, it's always come down to, to one, of the, one of those doubles ones. And, and as we know, that, that ladies' doubles pair is undefeated. Yes. So really, it's always going to come down possibly between the mixed or that men's doubles. Is true. Yeah. And you, know, you look at that, and their mixed doubles pairing is an international pairing. So it, it always navigated towards that men's doubles fixture. And uh, with it, the chance for uh, redemption, if you like, for Leighton Davis and Wong Danny O. Played uh, superbly well in this uh, match earlier tonight. There's uh, a lot of experience and, uh, in partnership with uh, Mani Minota. So it'll be tough to bowl here. But, uh, it is a sprint to 11. It's uh, a different beast to the earlier best of three game match. And Evan Wong just uh, walking into frame there at 19 years of age certainly been walking into the frame during this learn coach new zealand badminton league one of a number of youngsters given their opportunity ready to play and they need to be There's no, no real opportunity for a slow start in, the, in, in this match, so you've really got to be right on the money from the, from the word go. Yeah, this, this one, but yeah, I think, okay, no problem. Golden game, it is literally one game to 11. Having been 3 1 down in the tie, the Wolves will be happy they're here. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Hato Hux, represented by Abhinav Monata, Danny Ott. And on my left, One Pew Wolves. Represented by Oliver Layton Davis, Ivan Wong. <laughs> One few wolf to serve. Oliver Layton Davis to Danny Ott. Level 
play. I think we heard some howling from the Wolves supporters, but they were pretty quickly quietened, weren't they? Yeah, that was a misjudgment by Wong. Two. Love. a vital point. They could ill afford to have gone three love down. One, two. It's a brave lead. Sorry. Oh. Ball. Sorry. Did not look comfortable there at all, Mani Minota. Just to really push that shoulder into that. Awkward position, really causing a pinch and troubling him for the best part of two or three weeks. And that's lovely. No problems on the light touch at net, though. Top is over. Four. Good return. Stop is over. Five. Four. But are we going to see back-to-back -back nights with the lesser ranked team Four. on the table coming up trumps Five. Six. separate them. Didn't come off the racket clean. And it's the turn now of Minota and Ode to Six. lead. You really have to win it's that short and it's in a playing golden game. You've got to hit it hard. Good judgment by Leighton Davis. Top is over. That one. Oh. <laughs> this is very tight. Shoulder's not too bad. Top is over. 
eight. Seems to have seven. the most trouble when he's having to draw that arm across the body and play with a bit of force. Oh, what a miss, and Danny Oat knows it. Stop it over. Eight. Oh, he's a big point, this one. Yeah. Oh, reactions. First from Leighton Davis, and then Danny Oat in desperation to get a piece of that. For the Wolves. Remember, they lost this men's doubles in the match earlier tonight. This will be bittersweet if they come back and win the Nine. Golden Game. They put their head on the pillow tonight and be wondering what might have been. Stop it over. got there at the request of his partner but then he couldn't keep the shuttle in play golden Ten. game point match point nine oh it's into the net and Leighton Davis will be furious but credit yeah. Minota and Danny Ode. They trailed through the middle stages of that golden game, but they came back to win it 11-9. And they booked their place in the grand final next week in suitable style, winning in a, a golden game performance over the gallant, but Imagine ultimately defeated 11, one pure Wolves. Nine.
Well, welcome back uh, to the uh, Harcourts Cooper & Co. North Harbour Badminton Centre for our final, final of the day at the Badminton New Zealand National Championships. Wonderful to relive some of those highlights from the Learn Coach New Zealand League, but our attention now firmly focused back on national titles. And the reason for the delay is that uh, two of our players, Sean Lee and Anona Pack, of course, uh, played and won the women's doubles. So their rest is complete. Their warm-up also has concluded. Let's welcome our players back on court for the mixed doubles final at the Nationals. Glenn Cox is alongside uh, for this one as we uh, look to wrap up uh, a wonderful day of finals with, uh, I, I think, uh, it's easy and brave to say this when the other matches have all been played, but I, I think this is the match of the day uh, between uh, two pairings, very hard to separate. You've got uh, the young guns against the experienced uh, campaigners, uh, very hard to pick which way this will go. Yeah, and the good, and the good thing here is all four players are on form. Mm. They're all playing really, really well, so... As you say, it's, uh, it's anyone's guess. The, uh, the experience of the international pairings, uh, they haven't played together probably for a few months. And then uh, Edward Lau and, and Sean Lee coming through and, and have played together before through Wait. some of the junior events, etc. Okay. So, so Wack. Okay, sir. Steve. Okay, then. Thank you. Craig Bush is the uh, umpire for this one. So the final chance to uh, have a look at uh, the path to the final yes. uh, for yep. Edward Lau and Sean Lee. That's uh, pretty comprehensive, isn't it, in uh, both their quarterfinal, 9 and 7, and then 11 and 10 in the semi-final over the Tagles, Nico and Alyssa, whilst uh, for Leighton Davis and Anona Pack, uh, 10 and 18 the quarterfinal, and then uh, 14 and 9. They won their semi-final, so relatively comfortable the path for both pairings through to today's final here at the National Championships for 2020. And I guess the really interesting thing here is, is that on, on one side of the court you've got really two singles players who have uh, just won a national title and runner-up in a national title, and then on the other side you've got two doubles and mixed specialists. The experts, yeah. yeah. Um, Here's the head-to-head, uh, -head, the tail of the tape, and... Uh, I, of most note, I think, is, is the age, that uh, everything else, I think, will be very, very even in terms of this match and the relative skill sets of the two teams. But it's the experience, perhaps, for Leighton Davis and Pack that will play in their favour. Uh, albeit Lau and Lee show no fear, and uh, they've played enough games now at this level to not be overawed at all by the occasion. No, and I don't think they will be. It'll be a matter of coming out, hitting the hitting the ground running and, and getting stuck in straight away. Nothing to lose because probably the pressure more on Oliver, Leighton Davis and Anona Pack uh, as the international pairing. So the, the two younger ones really can throw everything at it. I do think we, we saw in the men's doubles with uh, Leighton Davis and Minota pairing up to win. I, I do think the big players, though, look to try and time their run. And, and I think in that second game, the second set of that match, I think we saw Leighton Davis at his best in recent weeks, been building form nicely and and i think when national titles are on the line that uh, these players just know how to find the very best out of their games and maybe maybe when put in the pressure moments the younger players still haven't learned that necessarily um but but as we've said in edward lau and shauna lee you've got two quality quality young players who will play to win they will not play not to lose if, if, if you understand yep. that difference. I think you, uh, when Oliver Leighton Davis spoke after that doubles, he, he mentioned how they change things, and that's the experience. They can read, read the match properly, assess what's going on, and make those little subtle changes that make a difference. On my right, Oliver Lyndon Davis, Waikato, and Anona Park, North, uh, Northland, sorry, North Harbour. On my left, Edward Lau, and Shauna Lee, North Harbour. Another pack to serve to Edward Lau. Love all. Play. Service over. One love.
folks. So I think Glenn, you highlighted it. The fascinating Service thing here would be to see the uh, exuberance, One, the youthful flair four. of the two singles players against the proven, tried and trusted combination that is Layden Davis and Pack. And it, it is a very, very two, different format of the game. One. So the, the two singles players will certainly have to adapt. Oh. And just to underline, Leighton Davis and Packer ranked 70 one. in the world as a mixed combination. And it's a, they do have uh, Olympic aspirations. That is a heck of a mountain to climb, but they trying to conquer it. Oh. They started well. Change shuttle. Service over, two, four. Shauna Lee already having played in a couple of finals. And need I remind you she's won them both. Service over, five, two. Played Shauna Lee, just got out of the backcourt and let Lau take over Service from over. there Three, and the added five. power. It's made all the difference. But it was Lee that controlled that rally. Pack on the attack. Service over, six, four. Seven, four. Service over, five, seven. Leighton Davis are launching himself uh, as tall Service as he could over, make himself there. Eight, five. Shot. Nine, five. Anona Pack has won this title three of the last four years. It's a, on each occasion, partnering Micah Phillips. And they're in control here. Playing well. Ten, five. Service over, 6, 10. Oh, 
that's really clever. Again, that anticipation and knowing the shot that your partner's going to play allowed Leighton Davis the confidence to step in there. And they've taken an early stranglehold on this one. Really just not allowing Lau and Lee to find a rhythm, get into the game. No, very, went about their work very, very quickly. Um, established pairing and they know what this is all about. So they just got stuck in from the word go. And as you said, have, have, they have very little space for, for Lau and, and Lee to to get established at this point. So they've got some work to do to get into it. And of course, you want Pack and, and Leighton Davis will just really be looking to build on, on the start they've had. Twenty seconds. Twenty seconds. Certainly looked the part as well. They're uh, one of the international uniforms that they will hope to take uh, 11, away from New Zealand uh, Play. when borders reopen of course um. hey. 12 given the opportunity four times to smash away a winner. Ultimately, you've got to prove six. successful. Cool. Yeah. You're hitting down, you've pretty much got control. So the more they do that and with the strength of Ollie at the back, it, it really makes it uh, easy for them to dictate. I think the apology there from Pat was that over. she probably Seven. shouldn't have played 13 the second shot in the rally from their perspective as a result they just got out of position but they're in a pretty handy position on the scoreboard service over 14 7 saw the uh, open court and uh, forgot to lift the shuttle over the net. Change shuttle. Over 15 8. Uh, playing like the international combination we know them to be. It's uh, a roll of the net to this time over. in favour of Lau. 15. here and Lau and Lee just start to give themselves some hope. And that one though sails straight between the two of them. Service over 16. Back, back so strong on that short overhead pushing and driving area. You better gotta get right over her to the back or we'll bring it back into the net. Hanging around though, aren't they? They're, they're doing 16. enough. They're just close enough to keep uh, Pack and Leighton Davis on their toes, that's for sure. Twelve, sixteen. 
That's undone though by a poor serve, just lifting it. Service over, 17-12. Service over, 13-17. Oh. Oh. I think that clip Lau's yeah. racket, did it? 18-13. Had he got out of the way, going long. 17 looks a whole lot different. As a result now though, first game 19, is within reach of Leighton Davis and Pack. Service over. 14-19. Again, game. just struggled with the serve. 20, game point, 14. Yeah, just uh, getting ahead of himself. Might be predicting the future if, if he can. I fancy those lotto numbers this week. Game. I might have to talk to him because he does get it right in the end. It's 21-14, Leighton Davis and Pack. And... Uh, Almost business-like, the description of that. They, they weren't forced into anything spectacular, but what they did was just very steady and very consistent. I think that's uh, exactly the terminology. It was business-like. It was, uh, they did the job, served well, returned well, kept on top of the rallies, kept the momentum going, and, and really just first game it on through it. A, a reasonably Davis, comfortable 21-14 for first game. 14. So they'll look to build on that, and really the, all, the, all the work to do for the, for the young pair who've got to really lift to get up into the, the level that's being played at the moment. And positionally, of course, they need to follow the rule book, the guide book, if you like, uh, for mixed doubles. But they, they maybe just got to rely on that flair. They've just got to find that individual brilliance and uh, throw some caution to the wind, try and find yeah, a couple absolutely. of winners. Yep, I mean, I doubt they'd have to have, really have a go at it and, and nothing to lose. So they've got to throw everything at it and, and play for each other as a, as a combination and, and get away from that singles repertoire that they've been playing so far today and get into that playing as a combination, setting each other up and, and looking for those gaps at the other end. Shauna Lee is at the business end of a busy day, having already won the uh, the women's singles over Sally Fu and then partnering an owner pack most recently to win the women's doubles. So she has two wins to her name today. Of course, Oliver Layden Davis and Anona Pack are looking to equal that tally, having won respectively men's doubles and the women's doubles. 20 seconds. 20 seconds. Now, I'm not sure of too many sports where you'd, you'd play with a partner 40 minutes ago and win a national title, and then you'd go at the other end of the court and play against them uh, for the next one. Yep. And uh, all played in, in great spirit. It's uh, no less focus when they're out there against each other. And I'm not sure I mentioned Oliver Layton Davis in winning the men's doubles. The last time he did so was 2010. I, I can't see, going back Second to 2009, game. I can't see that he's won a mixed title. Now, he may have Fly. pre-2009, but... underlines the, the amount of time he's spent overseas yeah. in his career, but but also just what this will mean for him today. Yeah, I mean, it's always good to, to have a national title, but um, in Ollie's defence, he, he has spent a lot of time in overseas, and, and especially Denmark and Europe playing, and, and it's taken him away from the opportunity to play in, in the national event. There, there is a Leighton Davis on the trophy, but of course it's Susanna. Love. Who won uh, alongside Henry yeah. Tam back in 2014. Service over, one, two. Good defense.
defence. Shawnee, the right movement, covered the right Over shot, but just couldn't three. get it out of the centre of the racket. It's textbook, it really is. This yeah. is where I'm going to serve. An owner, you'll Four. get this shot. It's One. just textbook. I don't think she was swinging for that before it even got there. Bit of uh, badminton telepathy. That wasn't quite so good. Because Edward Lau Service snuck over. in there and read Two. Oliver Layden Davis's Four. mind. Attack. Service over. Five, three. Change shuttle. Rally of the match so far. Great scrambling initially from Lee and Lau, but that's a continued Six, offense. Three. Just in the end, too much from Pack and Leighton Davis. Once they get that attack, they're really homing in on, on keeping that attack and that pressure on the other end. That's the experience of Leighton Davis. He took the pace off, but it hit it so steep that it was landing almost a foot in front. Yeah, once you've got the feet planted in defence, it's hard to go forward again, isn't it? Oh, goodness me. Service over. One of the shots Four, of the day. Seven. Struggling with the serve a little in this transition from singles to the mixed. Bolts. Service over. Good return from Five, Lee. Good comeback. Eight. So when they move forward, when Eight. they attack and hit down, they are as good as anyone. Straight at the body of Lau. Ten, six. I've just snuck to that little that little gap again. That little buffer. Yeah, 
There are very few unforced errors off the uh, the rackets of Leighton Davis and Pack, and difference uh, perhaps that's uh, Lee and, and Lau just not finding the same level of consistency. Yeah, and they're also putting it in the right place and, and creating the that downward pressure of attack, and that that just makes them basically the opposition having to hit up all the time and, and you just lose all that control. So that whole workmanship of Anona Pack and, and Ollie Leighton Davis really coming to, to show here. And they didn't play that often, I'm just trying to recall, during the Learn Coach New Zealand League. I'm just wondering, did they play once together as a combination? They were often separated uh, as a as a tactic seconds. in their one pure wolves lineup to uh, try and add some depth across their team. But Leighton Davis, so so hard to serve to. He stands right up on that line, makes uh, makes that Oliver. area very small that you can actually put that shuttle. So well, he's so tall and imposing, isn't he? That uh, it's it's hard to see where am I going to land the shuttle. Eleven six, play. Okay, the title very much. Their destiny, you would think. Well, that was incredible. You had to keep your eyes on that because uh, Edward Lau was not deserting Shauna Lee. He broke a string, he tried to change the racket, and incredibly, Glenn, on his bio, he says, One of my tricks is the ability to change a racket during a rally. Yeah, I tell you what, he was um, he was moving pretty quickly then when that string broke. He was off he was off to the side to pick up yep. one that was uh, sitting there ready to go. So it, it has it is seen in Babington a fair bit, but uh, when they do break a string, covered by their partner and they can get back on the court. Very challenging, of course, because Shauna Lee couldn't help but be put off by that. I mean, you're playing mixed doubles. It's the national well, fight. Where's he going? Where's he going? Well, if he's got a racket that won't work, it doesn't make too much difference. Play. Not sure that Pack left that so much by choice as was just caught out of position by a very good clear by Shauna Lee. Service over, 13, 7. Oh, lovely. Going backwards, mid-air, and just takes the pace off. 14-7. Edward, wait. Wait. Sometimes everything goes your way. I reckon Pack had one there off the frame. Sean Elite has taken a little tumble here, and that will require some attention to the court service and uh, and just give both pairings a chance for a little breather here. But it uh, can kind of wear on you when you look across the other side of the court and the opponents are hitting shots off a, a frame and. Starting to wonder what do I actually have to do here. 15, seven. Two of the brightest young stars in the game. Edward Lau and Shauna Lee. At the moment, it seems they've met their match in the experienced pack in Leighton Davis. Service over. 8, 15. Uh, 
Kelly said, yeah, you. And no, Anona said, no, no, that's going wide. <laughs> and it didn't. This just opens the door. Ten, it's just a 15. jar now for Lee and Lau. Oh, well, I can tell you what, they almost had to open that fire exit. Leighton Davis was headed out of it. 11 15. He's open only in emergency. Oh, I reckon that would have qualified. <laughs> Player coming through. Oh, the opening was there just momentarily. Service over, 16 11. Yeah, they've really got to get away from playing that flat stuff to a Nona pack. She loves it. And again, there are just those moments where we're seeing, don't get me wrong, they're both very proficient doubles and mixed players. They're in the final of the Nationals, but at times, the singles players emerge with Lee and Lau. Oh, Nona Pack. She might have been Service thinking over. about 12, getting her hands on the trophy already. Best not, because uh, Lau and 17. Lee, similar to the first game, just making a little run here. Mm. That time, the judgment of Pack was Service sound. Over. 18, 13. Hard to beat from here. 19-13. Match points now for the proven international combination. Without point, question, New Zealand's 13. leading. Mixed doubles exponents, Anona Pack and Oliver Layton Davis. And they do win it. It's a comprehensive performance. It was a dominant performance against uh, a young combination whose day will come, no question. Two of the brightest stars in the sport, uh, but they've been beaten today by two of the experienced pros in the sport. Match won by Oliver Lyndon Davis and Nona Pack, 21-14, 21-13. And uh, wrapping up a, a great day of finals, and we'll get your thoughts on the day overall uh, post our presentations, uh, Glenn, but... Uh, they deserve that. They're always going to be tough to roll, and they look to be in very, very good form, Leighton Davis and Pack. Yeah, and I think the word you used earlier, workmanship, was was really relevant in that. They, they just got about the job straight away. Um, all the, the basic stuff to cover, the serve, the return of serve, all very, very sound and, and very, very tough to beat when they are up in that mode. Um, quick on attack, known to Pack picking off anything that was uh, driven or around that net and, and Ivite and Davis really just controlled it from the back. So very, very strong performance from uh, the international pairing there and, and certainly showing that they're the, uh, the strongest mixed doubles combination probably in New, in New Zealand Bevan at the moment. That's for real.
Thanks, Glenn. Uh, commiserations, guys. Um, I'll hand over the uh, the runner-up uh, prizes uh, to you both. Um, it's been a busy day. It's been a busy day, but uh, you'll look back on this, I'm sure, and gain some real experience playing a, an international combination. Um, yeah. <laughs> Not much more to add at the moment. Obviously disappointed, but Edward, in terms of uh, that match today, just couldn't quite get a foothold into it. Yeah, I mean, we, we played some good rallies and good points, and uh, that's what we can take from this game, yeah. Well done, guys, on a busy day and, and a great day, a uh, great few days at the Nationals. Well done, guys. Commiserations on that one today. A finishing runner-up, which means that uh, we bring over the champions. I'll hand over the uh, the prizes. And what I will do this time, in owner, because I, I didn't hand you the doubles trophy. There we go. You take that as well. Congratulations, guys. Um, and in similar fashion to others that have had that experience through the Learn Coach League, looks like that's really set you guys into a pretty good space in terms of your form today. Yeah, it is. I think the whole idea was not to really sort of let them into the match, um, but that's a difficult thing to do across two, like, obviously longer sets than the, than the league as well. So, yeah, really happy with how we managed to do that. A um, couple of tweaks in the middle of the second set there as well, but I think, yeah, again, playing really well at the moment and, and happy with how we're working as a combination too. How much training have you done? Because you only played once together in the, in the Learn Coach League. So how much training have you done in preparation for the Nationals? Uh, we've been training together throughout the uh, seven weeks, the league and the last week as well. So every day, I guess. And, and ex <laughs> you had one day off. That's okay. Um, and in terms of similar to the doubles conversation, I guess, that uh, you guys have international aspirations. So uh, this is nice, isn't it? Now, I mentioned the doubles. It was a decade between titles. Have you won this one before at all? I don't think so, actually. Um, yeah, I haven't actually played for about the last 10 years as well, so it's nice to, to yeah, to get this one. I don't know, I know it's probably doing the, the research there, but... There will be a Leighton Davis on there, but it's not you. It'll be Susanna, 2014. But uh, So th this will be special for you today to win this uh, with, with an experienced combination as well. Nice to do it. Yeah, exactly. Like I mean, it, it is a national title, and to, to, to win those is, is always pretty special. And I think the way we did today as well, like we always knew that was going to be tough. And I think to play or put in a performance like that, um, really proud, to be honest. And you've had a busy couple of months. What now? Can you put your feet up for a, for a week or so? No, back to training tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Next tournament, though, is, is when for you guys? Yeah, draft, well, I think in November, depending how things go. But again, it's, it's still really up in the air eh, with everything that, that's going on um, at the moment. So I think, like I said, after the doubles, that Ricky's got a plan for the next six weeks. And there's a lot of, lot of multi-feed and hard work and, and base training as well. So I just get stuck into that, I reckon. And then, yeah, hopefully, fingers crossed, things open up by November. But if not, yeah, we'll be ready all the same. Good stuff. Congratulations, guys. Great, great win. There we go. So uh, Oliver Layden Davis and Anona Pack. I'll bring uh, Glenn in for a final uh, wrap on the day's uh, action. Our finals have concluded, and I'm just uh, thinking, all of them straight games. I don't think we had a three-setter today, did we? No, and I wonder if that's that different scoring system. So all of a sudden, we played a 21, and and you know there were some close ones in there, but there were some that were some more, more more comfortable. I would call that in their finals. And we've seen a real mix again today, and and just talking to perhaps two of the most experienced players on the scene here in New Zealand, but we've also seen the rising stars. Uh, how good is and was Shauna Lee? Uh, Edward Lau, his time will come. Uh, we saw Minota again on that experienced side of things. So we've seen a real cross-section today of the current stars and those that are absolutely tapping them on the shoulder. And, and I think that's a carry-on for the Learn Coach League that we, we saw as well. We saw a similar sort of combination. And I guess over the period of, of eight to ten weeks, we've, we've seen some really great badminton leading into this event, which is, which is the national championships. And we've seen the young ones realise that they're in the hunt and have a crack. And we've seen the experience come out and think, hey, how do we stop these guys coming through at the, at the right times? You've seen a lot of these nationals and, and great to be hosted here in, in your neck of the woods uh, with, with North Harbour. What did you think of the overall standard, not just today, but across the, the three days? Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's really coming up. It's really consistent. Uh, we're seeing a lot of youth come through and, and really challenging those people that are established. And that's really good for the sport because it keeps all areas uh, are competitive and, and you know, you're always looking behind you to see who's coming through. And those that are there, hey, there's an objective and we've got a target. So that wraps the uh, 2020 
uh, national championships. Uh, of course, uh, originally planned for in June, but deferred until now. But worth waiting for, I would suggest. Uh, a wonderful uh, few days of badminton here at uh, the North Harbour Badminton Centre. It's been a busy couple of months on the back of the Learn Coach New Zealand League as well. On behalf of uh, Glenn, thanks, mate, for uh, joining us in commentary and the team here at Badminton New Zealand. We wish you well until next time.